Last Saturday, Michigan pounded the Hoosiers of Indiana in yet another lopsided victory, 38 to 14. Jim Harbaugh was again sensational, completing 16 of 24 for 300 yards and a touchdown, placing him third on the all-time Wolverines record books with 29 TD tosses. Harbaugh enters today's contest, leading the Big Ten in passing efficiency and total offense. Look for him to have a big game against the Illini secondary. And this week's leader on the Michigan ground assault is punishing senior fullback Gerald White. Last week against Indiana, White simply overpowered a weaker Hoosier defense. But probably the most pleasant surprise for both this year has been the performance of split end Ken Higgins, who leads the maize and blue in receptions with 22. The 6'2 senior has shown no qualms about his enthusiasm for the game, as shown with this thrilling 51-yard touchdown bomb against the Hoosiers. Watch for the Harbaugh to Higgins connection to become today's favorite flight plan in a game which should be decided in the air. So this afternoon, it's mighty Michigan trying to forget about last season's nightmare against an Illini team, which seems to have a knack for crumbling the Wolverine dream. It's Illinois against Michigan next. Ryan 7-0 coming in, coming yeah. off a 38-14 victory over Indiana. The Illini 2-5, the only victories against Louisville in the opener and against Purdue in a wild win, 34-27. Weather conditions for today, well, it is a very balmy afternoon to start things off. 57 degrees, 55% humidity. Breeze blowing out of the northwest at 15 miles per hour. The skies are overcast after a clear, bright, sunny morning. Possibility of showers prevail later in the day. The officials for this afternoon's game, the referee will be Ortho Courts, the umpire's Dan Davey, the linesman Tom Ranson, and the balance of the crew, Tom Hoffman, Michael Sheehan, Tom Bryan, and Harold Mitchell. Who come onto the field before a capacity crowd of more than 105,000 as the drive for Pasadena continues here on a cloudy but beautiful November afternoon on the University of Michigan campus. The Wolverines with a 15, 19, and 1 advantage over the fighting Illini, the lone tie being that very disheartening 3-3 standoff a season ago, but it could have been worse. It was a game that Bo Schembechler said he was very proud of his team, a team that could have rolled over but did not battle the Illini tooth and nail, and Bo is shooting for his 164th victory as head coach here at the University of Michigan. Only one man has one more. That was Fielding Yost. You know, Larry, as we take a look at that record, it's uh, really an amazing one. He's in his 24th year here in, in, in Ann Arbor, and uh, 123, 38, and 4. Uh, this is some sort of football coach down here, and, you know, going to the Monday press conferences uh, of late, that he's a very interesting man, uh, a very candid man, a very funny man. Uh, uh, somebody that I think uh, you would want your son to play for. Re I really do, that he, he is an exceptional man. I think class is the one word you can sum him up with. Mike White is the head man for the University of Illinois. He's in his seventh season. His 13th year as a head coach. He is 42, 32, and 1 as the head coach for the University of Illinois, a team that was billed as the team for the 80s in the Big Ten, but one that has kind of fallen on hard times this year. We mentioned at the outset of the telecast that this club has lost a lot of big names. They're building now with some youth. Uh, Brian Metkausen that uh, Skip was talking about earlier, one of their two fine quarterbacks, is just a freshman. He hails from Hazelwood, Missouri. So it's a, a team that is being built here in 86 with a look toward the future. Michigan won the toss of the coin, elected to defer the choice, and the University of Illinois has chosen to receive the kickoff. Mike Gillette, the sophomore from St. Joseph, Michigan, will be kicking off. And the deep men are Ray Wilson, who wears number 21, and Keith Jones, who wears number 36 for Illinois. There's Gillette, who is the big hero in the victory over Iowa's Hawkeyes. We're ready for the opening kickoff as the Wolverines go after their eighth straight victory, a high end over end kick, and it is taken by Keith Jones, who's got a lot of speed, comes to the near side out to the 20, and breaks out to the 25-yard line, where he's hauled down by Bishop. So it'll be pretty good field position for the Illini to begin operations. 
the backfield and uh, wide receivers composed of Turner, Jones, Anthony Williams, James Gordon, and Stephen Pierce. He's having a big season for the Illini. Up front at Shirts, Kehoe, Harbor, Dennis, and McGowan as the uh, team from Champaign-Urbana comes to the line of scrimmage for the first time this afternoon. Usher is flanked wide to the left. Metcalfson gives to Jones. He's got a big hole, and he's all the way out to the 37-yard line for a first down. Tony Gant, a senior from Fremont, Ohio, made the tackle. We have a Wolverine down on the field. It's Billy Harris, the middle guard, who uh, looks as though he has uh, banged up that right hip. He is a little slow in getting up and now settles back to the turf. But a quick opener for Keith Jones, the very talented sophomore running back, a guy that has gotten a good deal of uh, advanced billing and uh, on that first play from scrimmage shows that he knows what to do with the ball when he gets a hold to run through. Yes, he was playing fullback in, in prior games and they moved him to tailback this weekend. Uh, he is a good athlete. And this is something that White hasn't ha seen of late, Larry, the good offensive line play on that time. That was a, a great hole to run through right now. And if they can do that or continue to do that to Michigan, it's going to be a long day for the world. Against half of the quarterback tandem, he hails from uh, California, a great name for his hometown, Cardiff by the Sea. That has a nice ring, doesn't it? It sure does. Billy Harris, a senior from Xenia, Ohio, second team all Big Ten a year ago, being uh, aided That's as he leaves. Player. You bet. Mike Teeter comes in. He's a freshman, 6'4", 240, and he'll replace Harris at the middle guard. The way he grabbed his hip, it looked almost as though he suffered a hip pointer, but uh, of course we're not trying to make a diagnosis. Willingham, Moeller, McIntyre, and Dieter Heron are the linebackers for the Wolverines. The three men up front are Messner, Harris, and Dave Fulkerson. I don't believe that Dave is getting the start. That was the late word we had. Lamb throwing to the side, and it is incomplete. Intended on the far side for Anthony Williams, who was the number two receiver for this club last year. Ivan Hicks got his hand in there and knocked it away from Williams. Illinois, excuse me, Larry, Illinois' passing attack is one that's really predicated almost as a basketball offense. They use a lot of picks coming out of the, the backfield. Their backs try to pick off the defenders. Very difficult to do that, though, against Michigan because they primarily play a zone back there. Darrell Usher is a wide receiver. They have a wing set to the left. That's Jerry Reese. Lamb gives to Jones. He's through the middle and all the way out to the midfield stripe. Keith Jones, who's averaging just three yards per carry, hauled down by Garland Rivers. But Jones has had two big gainers in his two carries so far today. It's kind of funny right now. It's just a basic handoff to Jones, as we can see him on the screen. Guy's doing a great job of giving us a great shot right into your living room here. Uh, the, hole, the hole's a great one. Once again, Michigan didn't think that Illinois was going to run the football. They thought they was going to pass. They're shaking him up right now. They have three wide receivers in now. Steven Williams is in. He's on the right side. And a big hole for Jeff Marklin, who gets inside the Michigan 38-yard line. Ivan Hicks and Tony Gant made the tackle. Now, you're looking at a team, Illinois, that has averaged just 91 yards a game rushing this season. And they, they have half up. of it already. <laughs> you bet your boots. Here we are once again. A little cross block by the two guards right there. And here comes the back right through the hole. This looks like it's too easy right now. Gary Muller, the defensive coordinator, is going to start making some adjustments quickly. Michigan apparently thinking pass, and uh, so far the Illini have carried the ball on the ground. Menkhausen carrying the ball in as the uh, replacement quarterback for Shane Lamb is stacked up at the line of scrimmage by Andre McIntyre. Menkhausen uh, <laughs> checks back out, and Shane Lamb returns. Can this work, Larry? It hasn't. <laughs> Kind of strange that White, a disciple of the passing game from Stanford and, and Bill Walsh, would uh, have a philosophy like this. Maybe he has been forced into this situation. James Gordon goes wide to the left. Over there with him is Stephen Pierce as the wide receivers. Wide to the right is Stephen Williams. And on the draw, it is Marklin, and he is nailed at the 36-yard line. Jeff Marklin, a junior from Los Angeles, this team heavily dominated by Californians. Andy Muller making the tackle for Michigan, the senior from Ann Arbor Pioneer. And again, the switch in the quarterbacks as Menkhausen comes in. Strange type of player already. They run a draw, and uh, if you're getting no pressure on the quarterback, that play is not going to work. And it didn't, and it brings up a third down and seven. First real test for the Illini against the Michigan 
defensive unit now. Menkhausen throwing, completes to Marklin. He's cut down at the 36-yard line by Eric Campbell, who came up and knifed underneath and upset him after a gain of about a yard. So the Michigan defensive unit comes through and stops them for virtually no gain. Here comes Minkhausen out right now, and you can't see, you'll see the Michigan defender come into your screen right there. They're in a zone laying back right there. They're hoping that the back can elude the defender and get the first down. They get the ball to him as quickly as possible, and then the man has to be an athlete. He has to go and take care of business. That time he couldn't. Chris Siambekas will attempt the three-pointer, and it'll be a long one. It will measure about 52 yards. He has had just one miss in his career, an extra points. This is a long field goal attempt, if indeed it is tried. It's fourth down and six. He's a soccer-style kicker, a lot of action in the line. Flags are all over the place. He drilled it the distance. We'll have to see what the infraction is. It apparently is against the University of Michigan. However, uh, unless it's a major penalty, it is not. It's an illegal procedure. It's a five-yard penalty. They still would be short of a first down, but perhaps the Illini would try to go for that first down. It'd be, what, fourth and one? It would be fourth and one, but it's kind of funny because the officials blew the play dead. The field goal was made. Now it would be unfortunate if they do not go for it that he misses the field goal. Well, you should have the option, I feel. They're going to kick now from the 37-yard uh, line. So it'll be a 47-yard kick for C.M. Beckus. Chad Little spotting it. He's got plenty of distance. And it's good. So the field goal by Chris C.M. Beckus puts Illinois on the scoreboard. A 47-yard boot. Very impressive drive by the Illini. We have 12 minutes and three seconds left to be played in the opening quarter. And the Illinois club has taken a 3-0 lead over the University of Michigan. We'll be back with a kickoff in just a moment. Chris Beckers gets ready to kick off for the Illini, who have surprised the Wolverines, taking the opening kickoff and moving right straight down the field on the ground and then kicking the 47-yard field goal to go up 3-0. You know, this happened two years ago when Illinois played here, Larry. They, they played very well in the first half. It was a very close game, and then all of a sudden, I remember it being in Spartan Stadium, all of a sudden, 21 unanswered points were scored in the third quarter. Uh, it's almost, it's ironic that Illinois moved the ball so well on Michigan in that first series, but I think Michigan, once again, their defensive philosophy was looking for the pass. They didn't pass the ball, they ran the ball. Here are the deep men, Colasar and Morris. And the kickoff goes to the far side. Kolazar waiting for it to pop up, and he picks it up at the four, and he gets out, or the nine, and he gets out to about the 17-yard line. A 10-yard return for Kolazar. Turner making the tackle. Here are the Wolverines' backs and receivers. Morris running out of the tailback slot. Gerald White at fullback. Brown, Kolazar, and Higgins are the other men involved. Up front is Querma getting the start tonight with uh, this afternoon with Dames, Vitale, Mark Hammerstein, and John Elliott. Black Hussar out of today's game. That's the reason for the change at that right tackle slot. Morris looking to get outside, gets a little bit of running room and crosses the 25 out to near the 26-yard line. Ed White came up from the Illinois secondary to make the tackle on Jamie Morris, the 5'7 junior from Air, Massachusetts. There are Harbaugh statistics for the season. Very impressive, hitting on 155 attempts, 64%. Eight touchdown passes. McMurtry has gone into the ball game to replace John Colazar. He is the great freshman candidate from Brockton, Massachusetts. McMurtry in motion, reverses. Handoff going to White, sticks his head down, plows into the middle, and it gets across the 30-yard line. Again, it was Ed White coming up to make the tackle. You certainly, if you're Illinois defensively, you certainly don't do not want to be in a position where it's it's second and four, second and three all the time because they will hurt you. Here's the guys in the linebacking position for Illinois: Finch, Guard, Glass, and Nelsworth. And the three men up front are Burchett, Blondell, and Peel. 
It's a first down for Michigan. Colazar in motion to the right, the short side. White skips through and gets out to about the 35-yard line, hit by Ellsworth. And he is dropped right at the 35, a little bit short. Let's call it the 34 and a half. A beautiful collegiate afternoon in Ann Arbor, Michigan, as the Wolverines and the Illinois do battle in the Big Ten. Backs for the Illini defensively. Harkey, White, Dawson, and African Grant playing the right corner. Second down and six yards to go. McMurtry is split wide to the left. Jokic is in as a split right end. Harbaugh back to throw for the first time. Looks to the near side, and McMurtry with a nice catch at the 47. Hit and dropped immediately. McMurtry had a man all over him. It looked like it may have been African Grant. I believe it was. But McMurtry made a very fine catch, his fifth of the season. As we take a look at Harbaugh, we're going to take the snap right along with him. He's going to come on back. He's looking at the receiver. He's going to throw into double coverage over here. Why this play works is because it's a major league arm. Puts the ball on a string. McMurtry makes a nice catch. First down, Michigan. Ball Jokic goes wide to the right as a split right end. Colazar in motion to the left. The handoff to White. He's got some running room across the 45 and dives to the Illinois 43 yard line. Ed White, who is getting quite a workout in the Illinois secondary, made the tackle. But it's another big gain for the Wolverines. From here, it appears to be enough for a first down. But they're going to bring the chains in from the far side. As you see now, Hubble, he's going to get Jamie Morris. They like to get the ball to him as deep as possible so he can take a look at what's available for himself. Very, very difficult runner. You have to make sure you lock your arms around him and grab him. If you just try to arm tackle him, he is strong enough to run through those things. Got the chain uh, tangled up a little bit. They finally got it uncoiled, and it is a first down as we had surmised. Looking at Mike White in his seventh season as the head coach at the University of Illinois. Nine minutes, 40 seconds left to be played in the opening quarter. Michigan moving the ball in its first possession as Illinois did, sticking basically with a ground attack. The handoff going to Bob Perriman. He's inside the 40-yard line to about the 39. Middle of that forward wall for Illinois, led by Scott Davis making the tackle on Bob Perriman, the senior from Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. In that particular time, Michigan's offense, they're in the backfield, they were in the wishbone. You'll see many different looks in that backfield. The eye, a split backfield, and also the wishbone. Again, you see the wishbone with Jokic split to the left, and McMurtry flanked to the right on second down. Harbaugh gives to Perriman a big hole down to the 32-yard line, and it's another Michigan first down, and it's another tackle for Ed White, the junior coming out of the free safety slot for the University of Illinois. They're so concerned with Morris and White that they forget about Perryman, and he's going to hurt you if you give him holes like this. The linebackers are running out right away, trying to get to the outside, looking for the pitch man. Well, it's not there. It's already in the fullback's hands. This drive began on the Michigan 19-yard line. The Wolverines have already accumulated four first downs in this drive. Again, it's the wishbone. And now it's White, nothing there, but squirts through, breaking the tackle of James Finch and driving forward to about the 31-yard line. It's back in the old days, the old crossbuck. White statistics for the season, averaging nearly four yards per carry. Gerald, a senior from Titusville, Florida. It's second down, nine yards to go for Michigan as Jokic comes wide to the left. And flank to the right is John Colazar. Again, it's the wishbone shown. And a five-man front for Illinois. Harbaugh back to throw. Looks long. Throwing for Colazar. Got it. But he was out of bounds. Lance Harkey was over defending. And Colazar went plowing into the Illinois band. Has not gotten up. There's movement, I think, defensively that might be holding. Also, there's a couple flags down. Colazar had one-on-one -on -one coverage right now. Harbaugh tries to get the ball to him, stretches out, tries to make a good catch. Really, the ball knocked 
The ground knocked the ball loose. The official really could have called that a reception. He may have had the wind knocked out of him as he came down. It looked ball. like he landed on the ball and could have popped the air out of it. I'm wondering right now if maybe his feet were out of bounds also, and that's why they call it an incomplete pass. Well, regardless, it's an incompleted forward pass. A penalty uh, against the University of Michigan for holding has been declined, and it'll bring up third down and nine. Correction, second down and nine. Being helped from the far side to the near side. He is holding his wrist, but the uh, damage may be elsewhere. He is a very tender young man right now. Maybe it's his right arm. Maybe it's his shoulder. Be. Maybe it's his, uh, looks like a shoulder, possibly. Uh, we can't speculate, of course. But we'll pass it along once we uh, get the word. Second down and nine for Michigan. Again, it's the wishbone. Harbaugh, with no place to go, is submerged at the 31-yard line as a host of white-shirted Illinois players converged and dropped him. Ellsworth led the tackle on him and it'll bring up third down and nine. That's the ninth play in this drive the Wolverines have run. Now Jokic comes in from the near sideline passes the play along to Jim Harbaugh as the Wolverines now trailing three nothing midway in this first quarter base a third and long. Receivers wide to the right are McMurtry and Jokic and Higgins is split to the left. Harbaugh straight back to throw over the middle. Caught by Higgins. He's at the 20 and dropped inside the 20-yard line by Bobby Dawson. Ken Higgins, the senior from Battle Creek Lakeview, really coming into his own in his final season with the Wolverines. As we take a look right now behind the quarterback, you're going to see a crossing pattern down the field, and it's to Higgins. And you'll see this a lot today, folks. He likes to go to Higgins on third down situation, critical situations. This young man's gotten open. How about this angle right now? Higgins tucks the ball away. Illinois defenders comes up, makes a nice hit there. It's a first down for the Wolverines. Morris trying the right side, squirms inside the 16 to close to the 15-yard line. There wasn't a whole lot of running room there, but the little guy from Massachusetts found a little bit of room and carried it just short of the 15-yard line. Ed White again making the tackle. As you can see, Jamie coming back to the huddle that time, you saw him walking behind the offensive lineman. Well, it seems to be a foot shorter than him, and that's why he's effective. He gets behind those big linemen and the defenders can't see where he's running. It's second down, six yards to go for the Wolverines who send McMurtry wide to the left. Jokic is a split right in. They're operating from the eye of this trip to the line of scrimmage, facing a four-man front. Morris, bang, and he is hit right at the 15-yard line and stood straight up by James Finch, a 6'3 senior, outside linebacker for the Illini. Very smart offensively, this man, Shen Beckler, is because you ask why they run the football well. They run the football left that time, so the ball gets into the middle of the field. So if, in fact, they do not make the third down, the ball is right in front of the goalpost for the field goal. It's now third and three as Bob Perriman has come onto the field. He'll operate as the up man in the wishbone. McMurtry is split to the right. Jokish flanked to the left. Harbaugh with a long count at the line of scrimmage. Fakes the handoff. Carries. He's got running room. Five. Touchdown, Michigan. An 81-yard drive culminated by a 13-yard scamper by Jim Harbaugh as the Wolverines come from behind to take a 6-3 lead over the University of Illinois with 5.24 left in the opening quarter. A very impressive drive. Mike Gillette will attempt the conversion. It'll be spotted by Marty Robbins. Lines down the snap. Spot kick is good, and the Wolverines now lead by a score of 7-3. to three. So Michigan, after yielding the three points to Illinois, comes roaring back in its first possession, travels 81 yards to hit Bader. And here is the scoring play by Jim Harbaugh. Here's the fake to Perryman right now. We're coming down the line of scrimmage. He sees good block there by White. Jokic, look at this block by a wideout. That's what makes the play go. If you have wideouts down the field that will give up their body, you're going to have plays like that. That's the end result. 
Here we got Jimmy coming down the line of scrimmage. Good fake. Once again, White, Jokic. It was Jokic that provided the big block on Ed White, who has been doing nothing but tackling Michigan players all afternoon. Down and that's sprung him. So the Wolverines with a 7-3 lead. And it'll be Mike Gillette, uh, the sophomore from St. Joseph. Very fine catcher on the Michigan baseball team to kick off. There's the scoring drive. Seven minutes and 39 seconds taken off the clock by the Wolverines as they go 81. Harbaugh for the six and Gillette for the extra point. Gillette will kick off now for Michigan. The deep men for Illinois are Ray Wilson and Keith Jones. Jones on the near side and here's a short end over end kick taken by Wilson at the 13. Out to the 30 hit and spun down at the 34 yard line. Ray Wilson returning the kickoff following the Michigan touchdown hauled down by Grant at the 34 yard line. Very good field position for Illinois though. The first time they had the football this will be the second possession the uh, Illini move the ball at will. The Wolverines in their scoring drive pretty much keeping things on the ground the one big pass to McMurtry keeping the drive alive. Lamb gives to Jones crashes through the left side on the slant shoves forward to about the 38 yard line. Andre McIntyre leading a pack of Wolverines who surrounded him and hauled him down. Five minutes three seconds left to be played in the opening quarter. Michigan seven Illinois three. Very surprising a very quick quarter. We really were expecting a long game today Larry because we figured the ball was going to be in the air. Well in fact Michigan just throws two passes and we've only seen a couple of incomplete passes from Illinois. There's been a switch so far. Jones tripped up as he crossed the line of scrimmage otherwise he had a big gainer going for him finally fell at the 43 yard line Mike Teeter looked as though he got just a hold of Jones toe and slowed him up knocked him off balance he fell short of a first down it'll be third and one after watching his young man in the first two series now I know why he's carrying the fo football rather than blocking he's been an exciting runner this afternoon Blacker wide to the right Metcausen carrying the ball and he's got the first down up to the 49 yard line. Andre McIntyre making the tackle on the freshman quarterback Brian Metcausen. He is from Hazelwood Missouri. Metcausen is coming out. It's a third and one kind of a strange call but it really is not because he can run the football as we do see here. He puts pressure on the corner. He does have a back coming out of the backfield so if there's pressure coming up he can just throw the ball over the defenders to the back for a first down also. James Gordon goes wide to the left as the lone flanker. The ends are tight. And now a man in motion to the right is Ray Wilson on first down for Illinois. Ben Cousin being chased and eludes the tackler and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Jack Walker came roaring through and almost dropped Ben Cousin for a loss. But he escaped. Mike Messner stopped him at the line of scrimmage. A little confusion it appears in the backfield. Menkhausen started to leave and then was set back onto the field by head coach Mike White. Really amazing that they don't get more delay of uh, penalties, delay of game calls against them. It's second down and 10 yards to go. Menkhausen back to throw, but he shovels it ahead to Marklin. He's got big running room at the 35, and he is cut down at the 29 yard line on a fine tackle by Doug Mallory who hit him around the shoe tops and he stumbled forward to the 29 yard line a 23 yard gain on a nice play Jeff Marklin the junior from L.A. carrying the ball. Marklin's going to take the old shovel pass right now and you're going to see him accelerate right now shows a little speed ball should be in the other hand saving tackle right there. Illinois again working the ground game as it did in this opening possession when they went for three. Lamb in a quarterback now turns gives to Keith Jones who shoves forward inside the 25 to about the 22 Garland Rivers making the tackle on Jones. 
Now Lamb is going out, Menkausen returning. We mentioned Menkausen, a highly recruited high school quarterback. We'll give you some statistics on him in a moment. Take a look at Garland Rivers right now. You can see him. He's going to come into your picture right now and make the hit. And he hurts his shoulder there on that play. He's doing some strange blocking up front, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Menkausen has Usher as a flanker to the right. That's the short side of the field. Gives to Turner, and he gets to about the 18. Menkausen threw for 1,110 yards as a high school senior and 12 touchdowns. Once threw four touchdown passes in 12 minutes as a high school senior. <laughs> Andre McIntyre and Andy Moore are making the tackle on Greg Turner. That's getting it done. Indeed it is, and uh, probably one of the reasons that you're seeing the two quarterback system for Illinois, Lamb the senior, Menkausen the heir apparent as a freshman. Lamb is in now, rolling to the left, looks, throws over the middle, and it's broken up nicely. I believe that was intended for Jerry Reese. It was. And Andy Muller got his hand in there and knocked it away. So it'll bring up second down and 10 yards to go for Illinois at the 18. Andy Muller, the heart and soul of this defense. Everywhere, every time they need a big play, this man is here. He is definitely the coach on that field. A minute 50 left in the opening quarter. It's Michigan 7, Illinois 3. Now Illinois has moved in front in the rushing yardage totals. It has been a ground game for both clubs. Jones with a big hole. He's at the 10. Upended and lands on the shoulder at the five-yard line. It's first and goal for Illinois. Tony Gant making the tackle. Well, as we take a look at the ground shot right here, we have linebackers blitzing that time. That's why the hole is there. Jones just picks the right hole. They get the ball to him deep in the backfield. He can see where the defenders are, picks the proper hole. And Michigan right now is a little surprised on this ground game. It's first and goal at the five-yard line. Lamb gives to Jones. Airborne falls at about the two-yard line. This tour down the field has been a ground attack for Illinois, a team that has averaged 91 yards per game rushing this season, nearing that figure here in the opening quarter. It's second down and goal from the one and a half yard line. Marklin and Jones are the setbacks behind Menkausen. Menkausen to Jones. He spun around and dropped for a loss. Back at the three yard line. Andre McIntyre knifed through, met him head on, and dropped him for a loss. So the Wolverines are in the process of putting up a very stiff goal line stand as Illinois faces now a third and goal from the three and a half. Well, Mr. Jones is hurting a little bit right now. Jones really has taken a couple of blasts. One as he uh, came down from his flight through the air, and he's going to leave the field. You know, we're taking a look right down the goal line right here, and the way this play is right now, they're trying to get some cross blocking up front, and that's what's been effective, effective for him on the way down here. But what you're on the one yard line, you got three shots to get it in. You have a man like Jones, a talented athlete. He has been jumping over the pile. I thought he was going to go over the top on in an I formation. Well, now the play took too long to develop, and they find themselves now on the four-yard line. Ball Schembechler on the near sideline for Michigan. Sends in Tony Gant in the secondary for the University of Michigan. As Illinois comes to the line of scrimmage, which is the three and a half, make it the four, with third down and goal. A lone setback. Menkhausen rolling out to the left. Stops, reverses, scores for Illinois. Brian Menkhausen reversed his field as he hit the line of scrimmage and had nothing but daylight. And Illinois goes in front, 9-7. to seven. We have ourselves a football game down here. Somebody forgot to tell Illinois that they were a 25-and-a-half point underdog today. Chris Sambeckis will try the conversion from the 10 yard line. The ball will be spotted by Chad Little. The kick is up and it's good. 
And with 11 seconds left in the opening quarter, Illinois is back in front. It's the Illini 10 and the University of Michigan 7. There is a flag down on the try for the point. The penalty was against Michigan. It has been declined and uh, Illinois holds a 10-7 lead. Minkhouse is right now, what they're doing on top with the two wideouts is to have a pick play down here and that caused the defenders of Michigan that they weren't able to fill to come out quickly because they had to make sure that they didn't get picked off. They were so worried about it. As you watch, see they're going down the line of scrimmage. Right there, the back has to worry about that offensive back coming out, catching the football, and it's only four yards. Young man made a very smart play that time. Big fellow also. Pretty good size at 6'5", 200 pounds. Five minutes and 13 seconds on this scoring drive for Illinois. Traveling uh, 65 yards and 12 plays with Menkausen going the final. And Illinois leads it by a score of 10 to 7. The penalty apparently against Illinois rather than Michigan and occurred after the try for the point. So now it is being assessed on the kickoff. Yeah, dead ball foul. You know the problem with that for Illinois is very simply that they had momentum in their ballpark right now. Now Michigan is definitely going to get field position. And that's something that Mike White uh, I know is a little upset about. Greg McMurtry and Jamie Morris will field this man's kickoff. This is Chris Ciambeckis, and he boots it away. McMurtry will handle it at the 20, comes up to the 25, 30, and he is upended at the 34-yard line. Well, we've got Jackson action at Northville coming up on Friday evening here on Pro-Am Sports. Join our past club and be a regular subscriber. You can call your local cable operator yeah. or call the pass office for further information. Michigan with a first down out at its own 34-yard line. First play from scrimmage gets about a yard, perhaps two, as Brian Birchfield made the tackle. You know, going back to the kickoff, but Birchfield being a young man, only a freshman, should have really let that ball go out of bounds and made Illinois kick over again. Would have given them an additional field position, obviously. Well, the first period has expired. Illinois leads it by a score of 10 to 7. There's an interesting sight. <laughs> they came equipped, didn't they? The Michigan fans, the Wolverines are down by three points as we start the second quarter. It's 10 to 7. Harbaugh on the draw, giving to Morris, reaches the line of scrimmage and picks up about three, possibly four, out to the 41-yard line. Well, we came to the ballpark expecting pass this afternoon. Yeah. Haven't seen many. We haven't. We've only, we've only seen Barry Smades, our man who handles all our stats for us. Five passes in the first quarter. Three by Illinois, two by Michigan. They both, both clubs have completed two passes. Uh, very unusual, very quick quarter, as we mentioned once again. And I'll get back to that Illinois blockage scheme, as I told you once before. Third down and two yards to go. Michigan with the wishbone. Jokic is a split right end. Harbaugh may be changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Facing a four-man front, gives it to Perriman. He shoves forward but does not get the necessary yardage for the first down as Illinois shuts off the Wolverines at about the 42-and-a-half yard line. Ellsworth made the tackle for the Illini. This will be an interesting call if he will go for it. Uh, I would imagine they were, the official already saying in his fourth down, and here comes the punter. Monty Robbins, the senior from Great Bend, Kansas, will punt for the University of Michigan, and Daryl Usher is the deep man. There's Monty Usher standing at the 10-yard line for the University of Illinois. Good snap. And a high, beautiful, long, booming spiral comes to the five, goes straight up in the air, and then kicks in. It looked as though the, the Wolverines were going to get a great break as that ball went straight up into the air. A 57-yard punt, but it kicked in at the last moment when we brought out to the 20-yard line. Great punt by Monty Robbins. It was a good punt. Well, the crowd a little on the somber side right now. It has been a shocker so far. Illinois leads 10-7 early 
and the second period. They're not, uh, they're not worried, they're just a little concerned. And as I mentioned to you folks before, Illinois, what they're doing up front is they're trapping sometimes, meaning that they're letting the defender go, and here comes a lineman from the other side of the scrimmage. They're cross-blocking up front. Michigan's having difficulties with that right now. Shane Lamb, the quarterback, on the draw to Marklin, and he gets about a yard and a half. This big crowd of 105,000 trying to get the Wolverines motivated a little bit. They have been uh, trying to help out the defensive unit, which has not had a whole lot of success stopping the ground game for Illinois so far today. You know, I like to play coach up here, Larry, and I always find it strange that when, as we mentioned just a little while ago, they've only thrown three passes while they're running a draw. Well, I guess you're going to have to ask somebody else. <laughs> Marklin cuts back, goes to the 23, and that's it. Mark Messner and Andy Moeller making the tackle for the University of Michigan. So in two plays from the line of scrimmage, both rushing, Illinois has been shut down, and the Illini face a third and seven. Jeff Marklin leaves the ball game. In as a wide receiver is Stephen Williams. Going wide to the right is James Gordon, and over there with him is Stephen Pierce, who is the leading receiver. Lamb back to throw. Over the middle it goes, incomplete. It was intended for Jerry Reese, who has caught 21, but this one was a little short, and the Michigan defensive unit gets a huge ovation as it leaves the field. Illinois is forced to punt. Tony Gant will go back as the deep man for the University of Michigan. This is Keith Jones to do the putting for Illinois. Chad Little has been doing the putting. Jones is getting the call. Bad snap. Bouncing ball. He's going to have to run, and he is drilled at the 10. J.J. Grant fell on the ball at the 10-yard line. Michigan with a big, big break. Snap is just a horrible snap right now. Does a good job of fielding the football right here. Right now, he should just get down on the ground, which Michigan helped him to do. You talk about getting a club back into a football game. Illinois has just done that. The Wolverines trail 10-7 with 12.02 left in the half, but now with a golden opportunity on a bad snap from center in a punting situation, they have it first down at the 10. Morris is drilled at the 13. A loss on the play. They'll mark his forward progress to the 12. This is Mike Gillette warming up the right leg on the sideline. James Finch making the tackle on Jamie Morris and the Wolverines suffering a loss of two. It'll be second down and 12. Higgins checks in along with Bob Perryman. Jokish comes out as does Jeff Brown for the Wolverines. McMurtry goes wide to the left. Higgins split to the right. Wishbone shown against a four-man Illinois front. Harbaugh to Perryman. And he drives inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. Jeff Gard made the tackle on Bob Perriman, the senior from Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. You know, that particular time, Illinois was in a front four, and it did help Michigan's cause out right here because they had wide splits that time, and they were in the wishbone. It's perfect for a wishbone type of offense. Derek Walker has come into the game along with Paul Jokish. Jokic going wide to the left as the wide receiver. Michigan with both ends tight, running from the eye formation. White and Morris. Harbaugh rolls to the left, looks, lobs. White's got it at the five, and he's cut down at the three. Illinois playing a sterling defensive football at the present time. 
And the Wolverines now face a fourth down with the Wolverine crowd shouting go. Well, this is where the end line helps out to the defender. It helps aid his cause because right now it's a little cat and mouse game. He has to not only cover the back coming out of the backfield, but he has the wide out in, in the corner. It'll be fourth down, about a yard, like at uh, two yards to go for the first down. Gillette will attempt a 20-yard field goal. A very sharp angle to the left. He is three for five in attempts so far this year. Delay it's going to be a delay and possibly a deliberate delay in order to give Gillette a better angle. Absolutely. I think that's absolutely correct. And possibly almost the first down or half the distance to the goal line, which would have made it fourth and about a half a foot. So uh, it works both ways. But it is being declined by Illinois. So ah. Gillette's going to have to try it from the 10 yard line. A lot of intelligent people play this game. It's a pretty good move on White's part. This is a very tough angle for Mike Gillette. It'll be spotted by Robbins. It's down, it's up, and it is good. So Mike Gillette did not allow that tough angle to bother him a bit. And he boots a 20-yard field goal and ties this game. With 9.38 left in the opening half, it's Michigan 10, Illinois 10. We'll be back with a kickoff in just a moment. You're watching Pro-Am Sports. Back Colts at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. The clouds starting to gather overhead. We have had a whale of a first half thus far. It is tied at 10-10 as Michigan prepares to kick off again. Mike Gillette, who has just tied the game with a 20-yard field goal, will kick off for the Wolverines. The deep men for Illinois are Ray Wilson and Keith Jones. They stand at the 7 and 4, respectively. A long end over end kick, carrying to the end zone, bounces straight up and then out of the end zone. They have this man, Jones, doing everything today. <laughs> Playing tailback, kicking the football, and uh, back here on the receiving team. Larry, if you're an Illinois fan, you've got to be very happy at this point. You get the ball, you fumble the ball on a, on a missed snap. On a punt, you give the ball up to Michigan on the 11-yard line, and you only come away giving up three. You've got to be very happy. Elliot Uzelak, assistant coach here at Michigan, talking and exhorting his troops as Illinois comes to the line of scrimmage, which is the 20, with a first down and a 10-10 tie. Ben Cousin gives to Jones. He slipped as he approached the line of scrimmage, but still found some daylight and the five yards. Todd Schulte making the tackle. It'll be a gain of five, second down and five for the Illini as Shane Lamb now checks in. He'll replace Brian Menkhausen at the quarterback spot. He sends Daryl Usher wide to the right. He is the lone wide receiver. Ends are tight. High formation. Lamb gives to Jones and he runs right through Schultz. Todd was hanging on but he was bowled forward to the 30 yard line. Close to a first down but there is a flag down at the 26. We got holding on Illinois. So that will nullify the five yard gain. As we take a look at the job being done up front, fairly good job. Look at Jones. That's what a coach teaches a running back. Protect the football and keep your legs going. Good job up front. That's where the war is right now and Illinois is winning that war. The holding call costs Taylor the fi or Jones the five yard gain and of course moves the ball back five yards. Ryan Menkhausen back into the ball game. It'll be a second down and 15 from the 11. Just three penalties so far this afternoon. A pair of receivers going wide to the right. As Illinois comes to the line of scrimmage, Ben Cousin back to throw, but shovels it ahead to Markland, and he is really blasted by Andy Moeller at the 15-yard line. That play worked to perfection in the first quarter, 
But this time, Mueller had sniffed it out, and it was one major league crash. You can only go to the well so many times, and, uh, and right now, this play, uh, they're not playing against a high school defense right now. They do make adjustments at this level, and right now, it is Mueller once again. He Allen. is where the football is. Excuse me, Larry. Alan Bishop has gone into the ball game along with Andre McIntyre. And now time is being called by the University of Illinois. Well, that's an interesting statistic, isn't it? Well, it was up and gone, but the uh, rushing totals and the passing totals are just about the reverse of what we anticipated this afternoon. Here it is again. Yes, it is. I'll tell you what. Uh, I really don't I can't explain it. We can't. You know, I, I'm certainly no uh, mind reader of a team that doesn't average 100 yards on the whole game on the ground has been running the ball so effectively against a Michigan team who's number two in the country. I, uh, mind-boggling, to say the least. Well, let's take a look at what's coming up next Saturday here on Pro-Am Spoon. Enjoy the programming here on Pass throughout your free weekend. And we invite you to call your local cable operator or the Pass office for further information at 313-583-7600. A throwback to the near side is completed out to the 25. He dives forward to the 28-yard line. Alan Bishop made the tackle after the gain by Jerry Reese. It's short of a first down by a couple, however, and the Wolverines will take over possession as Illinois again is forced to punt. Again, it is Keith Jones to do the punting at the 13th yard, 13 yard line, and Tony Gant is back at the Michigan 37. This time a much better snap, a left footed kick, and it's a short one. Gant has called for the fair catch at the 42, and the Wolverines will have great field position now. A 30 yard punt by Keith Jones. You know, maybe sometimes, you know, uh a left footer, the ball spins, rotates differently, so maybe White was hoping that the different rotation would create something. How is that? I think you're reaching. <laughs> That's what I think. I don't know. We have not had word that Chad Little, who is the punter for this team, is uh, injured. Uh, he has been holding the ball and tries for points and field goals. Wolverines, nevertheless, have a golden opportunity to snap this tie now. McMurtry is in motion to the left. Harbaugh rolling to his left, throws to the side, caught by White at the 45, and he is spun down at the 45-yard line by Steve Glasson. So it's a gain of just three yards. It'll be second down and seven for the University of Michigan. Right now, you can see the little sprint draw fake right there. He's going to come out, throws to White, coming out of the backfield. Has very soft hands, as you can see. And what they try to do is very simply, they try to get the ball in his hands and hope he can break a tackle and, and gain some yards. It's second down and about eight yards to go. A short eight, actually. Bob Perriman is in as Harbaugh goes back to throw. He's throwing long for McMurtry. He's got it at the 15, and down he goes at the 11-yard line. Keith Taylor saves a touchdown as Greg McMurtry grabs a 43-yard pass play. Right here, you can see the offensive line doing a great job. And you cannot cover this young man one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what Illinois is trying to do right now, and that is not going to work. Look at his hands. He goes up, make sure he comes down with the football first. Great offensive play. Tremendous speed. He's 6'3", grabbed it. First down, Michigan, deep in Illinois territory. Perryman pulls his way all the way down to the seven-yard line. That was a great fake that time by Harbaugh. Peel made the tackle on Perryman. It's not bad. He has been perfect through the air, 72 yards. McMurtry catching a pair for big gains on each. Bo Schembechler and Elliot Uzelak both working on the gum on the near sideline. 5.51 left in the opening half. McMurtry is flanked wide to the right. Jokish split to the left. Wishbone, Harbaugh looking at a five-man front. Perryman not much there as he shoves near the five and then pushed back. They'll mark his forward progress inside the six-yard line. 
Michigan can get a first down without scoring. They have to uh, travel only to the three to get the first down. Jeff Brown, the tight end, comes in along with his backup, Derek Walker. They will operate as tight ends as Michigan looks at a third and three now at the six yard line. Wolverines have converted half their third down situations. Michigan running from the wishbone. Harbaugh fakes, carries the ball himself to about the three. Well, he didn't make the three. It's closer to the four-yard line. He'll be short of a first down. And Michigan, again, is forced to make a decision here with fourth and less than a yard for the first down. Well, I think you're going to see Michigan going for it right now. They're going to make that decision right after this timeout. Michigan is going to make the decision during the timeout, <laughs> as a matter of fact, as Jim... Harbaugh calls time, and time is out. With 4.35 left in the first half, it's Michigan 10, Illinois top here at Michigan Stadium. The Illini and Wolverines are tied at 10-10 with four and a half minutes left in the first half. And Michigan is looking at fourth and less than a yard for the first down at about the four and a half yard, three and a half yard line. So the Wolverines will be going for it in a bid to uh, break this 10-10 standoff against the Illini. Illinois exceedingly tough and surprising with its offensive attack here in this first half. How about, I want to play coach here, huh? How about Jamie Morris? All right, we'll see. Uh, Perriman is the fullback. Morris and White are the running backs. Harbaugh gives to Perriman, drives through, got the first down close to the goal line. It is a first down, however, and the Wolverines will have it first and go at the one-yard line. So Bob Perriman, the senior from Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts, gets the big yardage. Great job by the offensive line coming off the football that time. Perriman had a nice hole. Usually you don't find a hole that large down on the goal line. They're usually in a, a gap type of defense, meaning that there is a defender in every hole. Same formation, wishbone. Both ends are tight. On first and goal for the Wolverines at the one. And again, it's Perriman. Touchdown, Michigan. Bob Perriman diving the final yard to Peter. And Michigan has broken this 10-10 tie with 4.17 left to be played in the half. And Mike Gillette will attempt the conversion with Monty Robbins spotting it at the 10-yard line. The spot and the kick is good. And Michigan again has come from behind and has moved in front. It's the Wolverine 17, Illinois 10 into a long touchdown drive as Perriman scores for the University of Michigan. Once again, we'll take a look down on the goal line. Just up and over. Very hard to stop anybody with the athletic ability of Perryman. Nice blocking. The defenders are trying to submarine, trying to get penetration, and what happens is they get low and the back just jumps over the pile. So the Wolverine fans are alive and happy again here at Michigan Stadium as Mike Gillette prepares to kick off again for the Wolverines. The deep men for Illinois, Ray Wilson and Keith Jones. Jones wearing number 36, he's the upper part of your screen, and Ray Wilson, number 21, lower right-hand corner. 4-13 left to be played in the first half. It's Michigan third, uh, 17, Illinois 10, and Gillette is ready to kick it away. Jones grabs it at the 4. Out to the 20, the 30, and spilled at the 32-and-a-half-yard line by J.J. Grant. A 28-yard return for Keith Jones, who has done it all. He's done everything but pass here this afternoon. Except for one kickoff today, folks, that went through the end zone. Illinois has had great field position on their kickoffs. Good 
good blocking that time. Michigan's not filling the lanes. They're not coming down. You're taught when you're on football coverage on a kickoff to come down in straight lines. They did not do that. Usher is flanked wide to the left. He's the long wide receiver as Lamb gives to Jones, and he is really drilled at the 33. Keith Jones had absolutely no opportunity as Mark Messner filled quickly, grabbed him and dropped him. Second and ten. The latest Michigan scoring drive taking three minutes nine seconds traveling 58 yards. Perryman scoring from a yard out. The big play going to number one Greg McMurtry. McMurtry with two big pass receptions this afternoon. Blanker wide to the left is Pierce. Nothing going on as Markland is hauled down back at the 34 by Messner who is really having himself a great series. Here's Jim Harbaugh on the near sideline. Michigan offensive unit gathered in front of the Wolverine bench. It'll be third down and ten for Illinois. Ball at the 33 yard line in Illinois territory. Darrell Usher goes wide to the right. A slot to the right is Stephen Pierce and a split left end. John Lamb changing the play at the line of scrimmage. He has Stephen Williams as a split left end now, taking a lot of time and too much. So it'll be a delay of the game penalty as Lamb tried to change the play at the line of scrimmage. That caught and it'll cost him five. You know, that time right now, Lamb did have a very difficult decision. First of all, they took too much time in the huddle itself. Then when he got to the line of scrimmage, he's got Andy Mola playing with him, showing that he's coming on a blitz. He's got Garland Rivers saying he's going to come on a blitz. So he changes uh, the play at the line of scrimmage. Right now, we do see the movement to right guard. Also, it, I could have been delay of game also. It is delay of the game. The official just giving us the signal. Bob Burns, our spotter, just noted the fact that there are only 15 seconds left on the play clock when Lamb started to try to change the play. He just ran out of time. Now Menkhausen is in at the quarterback position. And he's back to throw to the side and it's dropped by Anthony Williams. Williams had seven catches last week against Wisconsin. But he drops this one. And as a result, Illinois will have to give up possession of the football. Well, they have made some defensive adjustments uh, on the sidelines. And as you can see in the last two series, they have solved those blocking schemes of Illinois. Keith Jones punting. He stands at his 13-yard line. And Tony Gant is back for the Wolverines. Calls for the fair catch, handles it, and then he is drilled. And that, of course, will cost Illinois. A 39-yard punt, a fair catch called for by Gant, and he was really blasted. So yeah. Illinois, as a result, will lose some yardage. Not sure exactly very who this is. Yeah, very silly play right now because the defender, we're going to see him coming in number five, I believe it is, of Illinois, Tony Dawson. Dawson. Dawson did hesitate. He did see the hand go up for the fair catch. Why he went out and hit him, I, I have no idea. Well, unless it's going unless to cost maybe, him. yeah, it's going to cost him 50 yards. Unless maybe he didn't see the hand go up, gave him the necessary yards, enabled him to catch the football, and then tackled him. Earlier in the day, Dawson may have thought Gant was shielding his eyes from the sun, but there is no sun here in Ann Arbor there at the present time. Chance of rain, as a matter of fact. Big effect. chance of rain. So the Wolverines with great field position, plenty of time. McMurtry is in motion. Harbaugh turns back to throw. He's looking long. He's got Jokic. Touchdown, Michigan. A 51-yard touchdown pass from Jim Harbaugh to Paul Jokic, who staggered in for the final three, and the Wolverines lead it 23 to 10. Mike Gillette 
will attempt the conversion with 2.15 left in the half. The ball is down. The kick is up. It's good. And Michigan has expanded its lead now to 24 to 10. And Illinois may be in some serious trouble. Well, that was 14 quick unanswered points in about four minutes, Mr. Spades. Somewhere in that area, I think two scoring drives anyhow. Uh, what, they, what they're doing right now is they're finding that Illinois' the secondary has been suspect the whole season, and they're taking advantage of it right now. Harbaugh is now six for six with a touchdown pass, 123 yards. He's in the process of having still another great day. You know, it really is a shame uh, because the young man down in Mi Miami, Tista Verde, probably will be the Heisman Trophy Award winner. Let's take a look right now. We're going to see him drop back once again. Great protection. And who they're working on is Hockey, the defensive back once again. The same exact play that was to McMurtry. They're doing business on hockey right now. Got the guard coming over. Nice job, Hammerstein. Look at the pass right on the money. Keeps his balance and goes in. Paul Jokic, the 6'8 senior from Claxton, scoring six for the Wolverines, who now lead 24 to 10. Illinois led early, 3-0 and then came back to take a 10 to 7 lead. But this man has directed the uh, Wolverine offensive attack into a very explosive final quarter of this first half. Jones taking the kickoff. A flag is down and he's out to the 30 yard line. Dropped at the 31 but a flag was thrown at the 20. A 28 yard return for Keith Jones. Well, the problems keep on coming, Larry. And once they seem to occur, they come in threes. And here is the third one, a clip on the 22-yard line. Now they'll go back to around the 12-yard line, bad field position. Michigan has two timeouts left. So if Illinois does not create anything offensively, Michigan will have another shot at a scoring opportunity. Good point with two minutes, nine seconds left in the opening half. The Michigan defensive unit has gotten exceedingly tough. They have, as a result of the clipping penalty, Illinois deep in its own territory. A 51 yard pass play from Harbaugh to Jokic, the latest for Michigan. I like Michigan. that scoring drive for one play. <laughs> as I was mentioning, though, if it wasn't for that young man down in Miami, Testa Verde, uh, Harbaugh would be on everybody's first team All American and, and, and might make some of them yet as we will await that. Lamb turns. Barkland gets it out to about the 17 yard line. Tackle made by Billy Harris who was banged up earlier and now back in defensively at middle guard for the University of Michigan. John Colazar who was banged up on a passing play midway through the first period has not returned for further duty thus far in this half. A minute 46 left to be played in the first half. Lamb is back to throw, drills it, and it's caught beautifully by Reese at the 36-yard line, diving, falling as he made the catch, stopping the clock, allowing it to be stopped at a minute 39 left in the half as the chain has moved up the field. Well, right now they're in a two-minute offense right now, going without a huddle. Pair of receivers wide to the left. That's the long side of the field. Lamb straight back being rushed, but unloads, and it's caught by Reese. He's at the Michigan 40-yard line. Tackle made by Tony Gant. Dieter Heron, pretty, pretty good rush on Lamb, but he unloaded and completed the pass. His Lamb right now, the same exact play as the previous one. There is a flag, though, down. Illegal procedure against Illinois, so this is all going to go for naught. Right now, Michigan's defenders, they're in a, a zone defense back there. Prevent, they certainly do not want to give up a touchdown at this point. But if they keep on giving up passes underneath, Illinois might have the opportunity to, to kick a field goal. Well, they have a minute and a half left. Minute 29 to be specific. Backfield in motion is the call against the Illini. Move the ball back to the 31-yard line. That's the story. Michigan coming from behind to take a 14 point lead as we near the end of the first half. Penalty yardage assessed so far today. Split right end and uh, 
two wide receivers to the left. Lamb ring rushed by Heron. He throws it up for grabs. It's intercepted by Garland Rivers, and he's dropped it to 37. Dieter Heron with tremendous pressure, and Lamb just let her fly. Well, Michigan adds one more to the forced turnovers, running the total to 24 with the interception by Garland Rivers, the senior from Canton, Ohio. Well, as we take a look at Ram, uh, Ram Lamb this time, coming back in there is the pressure, as you can see, coming from the screen on both ends of him. He took a pretty good shot. He could not follow through, so what happens is the ball comes up a little short, and Mr. Rivers makes a nice interception. Watch him, he gets off his feet, and that's the, what really makes the play. Still a minute seven left as Harbaugh returns to throw again, and McMurtry is out of bounds at the 41-yard line in Illinois territory. Ed White drove the young fellow out of bounds, stopping the clock with a minute and a second left in the half. You know something, that's why, folks, that you do not see at major colleges freshmen be uh, playing because they like to redshirt him, but this is the one reason why this young man is playing. Great offensive tools. He comes across on, on, a, on a crossing pattern right here. And not only does he have enough sense to catch the ball, protect it, but to get out of bounds and stop the clock. Jokic in to replace him. Harbaugh throwing long. McMurtry, and it's almost intercepted. McMurtry was blinking toward the outside. and was broken up by Lance Harkey, who broke between the passer and the receiver and knocked it away. Well, Harkey has uh, finally come to his senses and said, I'm not going to give up this play anymore. Played a little cat and mouse job right there that time. That's the first miss for Harbaugh this afternoon. He's seven for eight. 145 yards. Higgins is into the ball game, replacing Jokish for the University of Michigan. He's a split left in on second down and 10 yards to go. Harbaugh on the draw to Morris and he's dropped for a loss back at the 45 yard line. Now the Wolverines call time immediately to save the 50 seconds on the clock. One of the Wolverine fans, there are a lot of them here today, 105,000 plus. Seems to be enjoying yourself. Everybody should be. It's been a very exciting first half of football. 50 seconds left to be played in the first half. Michigan leading it by a score of 24 to 10, and with one timeout remaining. It'll be third down and about 14 yards to go. The ball on the Illinois 45 when play resumes. Also, I want to mention we talked about Michigan's coaching staff. Uh, Coach Agassi right now has had some problems, and we wish him a speedy recovery. A very fine gentleman and a heck of a coach and has provided uh, college football players and students in the the respective universities he's been involved with, Eastern Michigan, Northwestern Michigan, others. A great deal of leadership. Good man. Paul Jokish has gone into the ball game along with Jeff Brown. Brown the tight end. McMurtry comes wide to the right. He has He's single a coverage. Flanker. And Jokish is split to the right as Harbaugh goes back to throw. Dumps it off now on the screen to White. Comes to the near side, cuts inside the 40, and he is down at the 35-yard line. He'll be short of a first down by about four yards. Just 36 seconds left in the half now as the Wolverines get organized. Keith Taylor making the tackle. And now Michigan finally calls time. They let a few ticks expire before time was officially called. 31 seconds remain in the first half. And that's the final timeout for the Wolverines this half. Well, I can understand if they're going to go for a field goal, why they let the ticks go off the clock. But if they're going to, in fact, go for the first down, then they should have called timeout immediately. It is a fourth down and four situation they're discussing. You can see the Michigan club out of timeouts. And it looks as though they're going to go for the three. So Mike Gillette, who has booted one 53 yards this season, will try a 52-yarder. Monty Robbins will spot it. You know, and it seems, Larry, uh, we did see an earlier 50-yard field goal that was uh, disallowed because of an illegal procedure call. Uh, the ball seems to be traveling well today. Well, he'll have the breeze at his back, and that will certainly be of help. The snap, the spot, looks long enough, and it is good! 
Mike Gillette, a 52-yard field goal. One yard shy of the 53-yarder he had earlier. And Michigan puts three more on the scoreboard. It's now the Wolverines 27, Illinois 10. Twenty six seconds left to be played in the first half and Michigan has them roaring from behind and establishing a 17 point lead as we head toward halftime. Well Mike Gillette is a great story. I think everyone uh, very aware of uh, what this man has done. He has climbed from the doghouse <laughs> into the pit house I guess. <laughs> Made that big kick against Iowa. And just completed on a 52 yard field goal. Gillette will be kicking off to these men Ray Wilson the lower part of your screen and Keith Jones the upper part. Just 26 seconds left in the opening half. Michigan 27 Illinois 10. Gillette the sophomore from St. Joseph Michigan ready to kick it away. And it's a low bouncing ball. Takes a high hop picked off by Jones. He's out to the 30 and shoves forward to the 35 yard line. Elliot Uzlak working the sidelines for Michigan talking to Mike Hammerstein. Mark Hammerstein a 19 yard return. Mike's younger brother. Well we uh, hope you're enjoying your weekend preview here on Pro-Am Sports in order to order Pro-Am Sports you can call your local cable operator or you can contact Pro-Am Sports office at 313-583-7600 for further information. Keith Jones driven out of bounds at the nope he did not get out of bounds the clock continues to wind at the 42 yard line Doug Mallory making a tackle now time has been called by Illinois with seven seconds left in the half. This guy has been a busy man this afternoon Keith Jones he has punted he has returned kickoffs he has run with abandon out of the backfield although here in the second half Michigan's pretty well shut him down and, and in the second quarter exactly and that's unfortunate right now because Michigan uh, was feeling the effects of Illinois running game now though with Illinois being down 17 points you can forget about the running game they're going to have to put the ball in the air and once you play a Michigan team and you're doing the things that you really don't want to do or have you haven't done effectively then you're playing into Michigan's hands. You had to guess you had to know that sooner or later Michigan would shut down that running game. It had to happen and uh, it was just a matter of when it would happen. Now it has and it in the has. second half we'll find Illinois going back to what it has done best for the most part of this season and that's use the aerial route. So Illinois just called a timeout. They went over to talk with Mike White. I would imagine uh, with seven seconds we're going to see that familiar formation probably of three receivers or two receivers to one side of the field and it's a Hail Mary. They have a lot of very talented receivers Stephen Pierce the uh, split end leads the Big Ten but he has not caught one this afternoon. They have the Wolverines spread them out all over the field as Metcalfson goes back to throw and completes the pass at the 42 yard line to Stephen Williams. And he didn't get out of bounds and that's it. Real smart play. Everybody's expecting the home run football and, and White tries to go underneath possibly for a field goal hoping that his receiver could get out of bounds. Apparently he did because uh, everybody's being sent back to their respective spots on the field. Time called. Well maybe the fact is that the clock here is not the official time on the field and possibly there is a tick left. Or maybe there's a flag down. It is a flag and a face mask. Uh -oh. And that is against Michigan. You can't end the uh, half, exactly. half on the, a penalty. So actually it's a big break for Illinois here. They have the pass reception down to the 42 yard line. They'll have another five tacked on. I hope they're going to put 10 on. Now this is amazing. Or are they going to put 15 on? 15. They moved all the way back to the 27 yard line. And Bo is very unhappy about this call. But, uh, didn't see it in the live play whether it was a uh, determined effort to grab that face mask or whether it was just a passing grab but uh, regardless the officials have moved it down and uh, it'll be a try for the three pointer by Sam Besky and he kicks it through. So Chris Sam Beckus kicks the three pointer 
And uh, Illinois gets a late field goal to get back onto the board and narrow the gap to 14. So kind of a strange ending to a first half, but a very entertaining first half here at Michigan. Well, you know, Illinois has to be very happy right now going off the field with those three points. And right now, look at Bowie. He's grabbing the ear of the official. But what's going to happen now is the Wolverines were very, very happy about the half. Now Bo's going to go in <laughs> and talk to a few people. <laughs> so we're at halftime at Michigan Stadium. It's the University of Michigan 27, the University of Illinois 13. Stay with us now. We'll be back in just a moment on Pro-Am Sports. of uh, Mr. Testaverde, 7-0, the Wolverines 7-0, and Penn State, of course, 7-0. The University of Oklahoma losing only to Miami, but by a sizable margin, ranked fourth. And then the Auburn Tigers at 7-0. They are ranked fifth this week. The University of Washington, 6-1 starting today's play in sixth in the top ten poll. Arizona, 6-0-1. Alabama 7-1, Nebraska being surprised by Colorado last week, settling for ninth this week, and Texas A&M also with a 6-1 win-loss record in 10th place. So that's a look at the latest poll starting today's competition. We have more football coming your way on Pro-Am Sports as this season progresses. We'll take a look ahead at a reminder of what is coming up. We'll have coverage of the Minnesota-Michigan game two weeks from tonight on Sunday, November 16th. Kickoff time is set for 7 o'clock. The Golden Gophers will challenge All-America candidate Jim Harbaugh and the Wolverines right here at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. It's two weeks from tonight, 7 o'clock, here on Pro-Am Sports. We'll be back with a kickoff, so please stay with us. We'll have more from Michigan Stadium. And leading Illinois. The scrimmage on the option. He's going to keep it. Great block there by Jokic. And he's going to go in for the score. That's Michigan's first score. Let's take a look at the same play where he's going to come down the line. Look at the great blocking there. And that's why those things happen. When you block well, you score. And that's exactly what happened. Well, the Reigns has scored again. And here's a look at number two. Here is the Illinois quarterback, Meckhouse, and he's coming down the line and he does a nice job with... Uh, Take another look at it. He's going to roll out right now. And the problem he has is the corner's worrying about the two receivers so he can't come up and make the stick. Does a nice job of getting into the end zone. And here's Perryman. Here's another score on Michigan. Up and over. Take a look at the blocking right now. The Illinois people are trying to get penetration so they submarine Perryman goes up over and another six points for Michigan and here is the last Michigan touchdown right now here's the home run ball right now to Paul Jokic he's going to catch it great catch by him he's going to stumble a little bit but keeps his balance and he goes in Here's the kickoff to open the second half. It is fielded by Eric Campbell. He's off the 25, and he is upended, falling at the 28-yard line. Campbell combining with Jamie Morris in the kickoff return location as a result of John Colazar being injured in the first half. Here are the statistics. Not weighing heavily, but a shade toward the Wolverines. And as you can see right now, first down is pretty much even and what happened there in the first half Illinois was able to run the football and got many of those first downs on the ground Michigan with a football first down at the 28 yard line Harbaugh gives to Morris and there's nothing there as he hits the 30 and he is crunched at the 30 and a half yard line 27 to 13 Michigan leading Illinois in the early seconds of this second half 
This series right here is very important to Illinois' football team right now. If Michigan controls the ball and goes down the field and scores, it's going to be a very long afternoon for the Illinois football team right now. They have to stop Michigan if they're going to be in this football game. McMurtry goes wide to the right on second down and eight. Jokic is split to the left. Harbaugh back to throw. Has time. Now he's being pursued and he throws. Let's see. It will be ruled an incompleted forward pass. The uh, Illini felt that intentional grounding should have been called, but a flag did not go down. Well, what happened that time was, as we're going to take a look at it, it's a screenplay to Morris. Morris is trying to come through. He gets tackled, knocked down, and he's looking to get up, and uh, there's no screen because he can't get through. It'll be third down and 19 yards to go for Michigan. Ken Higgins comes into the game. He'll replace Jeff Brown at the tight end spot. Wolverines breaking the huddle, sending Greg McMurtry wide to the left along with Jokish. McMurtry is set outside of Jokish. And Brown is split to the right as Harbaugh goes back to throw. He's going to run. He's out to the 25. He got some daylight. He's at the 30 and down at the 39-yard line. However, there is a flag down back at the 17-yard line. We have holding. Harbaugh had carried for the necessary yardage for the first down, but we're going to get a holding call against the University of Michigan, and it'll nullify the very long gain by Jim Harbaugh. Right now, I don't know if we're going to be able to see the holding right here. Harbaugh goes back. Looks like he's in good shape right now. There possibly is the holding. Very difficult to see, but you can see this young man, great athletic talents, good speed for a quarterback. And he understands he's going to get down. He's not going to take any hits that are unnecessary. So the loss further moves the Wolverines closer to their own goal line. There are the penalty yardage for this afternoon. It'll be third down and 29 for Michigan. McMurtry coming wide to the left. Jokic is a split left end. Ken Higgins is flanked to the right. Harbaugh straight back to throw. Screen pass to White. He's out at the 10, 15, cuts to his right at the 20, and down he goes at the 27-yard line. So the Michigan Wolverines unable to move the ball in their first possession to open the third period. We forced to punt it away. It'll be just the second punt this afternoon for Michigan. In the first half, Monty Robinson booted one 57 yards. This is a very safe play right here. It's just a screen right now to White. Very safe call. What they're trying to do is hope he can break a couple tackles like he's doing, get the ball out of, out of get some field position so they can have a better, better field position for the punt. Robin stands at his 12-yard line. Usher is at the 33 in Illinois territory. Good snap from center, and a kick is just away, and it's another dandy. Usher retreats back to his 28, going parallel and hauled down, and a great play on the far side by Dieter Heron. What a play as he came roaring down the field on the 44-yard punt by Monty Robbins, and Dieter Heron drilled him, and there was no return. Great play on the part of both of these men. Right now, Usher, he's going to get the football right now. It takes a lot of courage to catch that football when he knows he has no blockers because they did have the punt, punt block on right time that time. And uh, good tackle by Heron again, though. Pair of receivers wide to the right. As Illinois comes to the line of scrimmage with a first down, Metcalfson rolling out to the right but throws back to the left, and it's incomplete. It was a screen pass. They were attempting to set up. It squirted through Ray Wilson's hands and hit his chest and dropped to the turf. And that was a well-designed football play that time. They had motion all the way coming to their right. Set up perfectly. Had a couple of blockers in front for him. Just didn't catch the football. Ryan Metcalfson, the freshman from Hazelwood, Missouri, stays on the field for second down and 10. Darrell Usher comes wide to the right. Also coming to the right is Darren Brown. He's up as a split right end. Then Cousin retreats, dumps it over the middle. This one is caught at the 27-yard line. And Markland takes it out across the 35 to about the 36. Mark Messner made the tackle. But it'll be third down and about five yards to go for the Illini, who need a big play to keep this drive going. What you're going to see right now is 
They put a little front up. They let him get penetration. It's a tight end screen. He's going to come back underneath. Well-designed play once again. What they're trying to do by using two screens in these two in the sequence is to prevent Michigan from putting a lot of heat on the quarterback. This is Steve Fabert coming off for the University of Michigan. It's been a tough day for the Wolverines so far this afternoon. It's 27-13. Michigan leads Illinois. Time is out on the field. 12-25 left in the third quarter. We'll be back in a while. And a big third down for the University of Illinois. And the ball is dropped in the snap as Menkhausen didn't get full possession, fell on the ball. It'll bring up a fourth down, and Michigan will take over the football as the Illini are forced to punt it away. Poor exchange on the snap. Well, you would think this would be the simplest thing in football, the center getting the football to the quarterback, but yet time in and time out at every level of football, there is problems. The quarterback's yelling at the center. The center doesn't want to hear it, and the football's on the ground. And it'll be Joe's depart. It is blocked by Dieter Heron. He's chasing it and will down it at the... Well, it goes all the way to the end zone. Well, nope, it's the one-half-yard line. Dieter Heron blocked the punt. It rolled out of bounds after the big chase at the one-yard line where it'll be first down for Michigan. And we were going to do Dieter Heron in the open, too. <laughs> Dieter is doing his own thing. Here, look at this. But right now... And he, a couple of Wolverines could have blocked that football right now. Let's take a look. What, what the rule is, is that you can't advance a punt. Now, it was the knee was down. I thought it had gone out of bounds from our vantage point, but it's clear on this play, right? It'll be first down and goal. So the Wolverines creating a big break. The Wolverines have absolutely dominated opponents in the third quarter of this season. It's an amazing statistic. Perriman is stopped short, I believe. He went airborne, but was stopped short of the goal line. So it'll be second down and goal for the Wolverines. And I was corrected. You can advance a block punt. I didn't realize that cannot advance a fumble in college ball. See, you always learn something day in and day out. But right now, Perriman did get stopped that time. Illinois is trying to make a valiant effort down here on the goal line. They certainly do not want Michigan to get in early in the third quarter. Everybody up on the line of scrimmage. Three linebackers tight. Harbaugh down the line. Touchdown, Michigan. Jim Harbaugh skirting in for his second touchdown of the afternoon, and Michigan has opened the big lead. It's 33 to 13, with 10:55 left in the third quarter. Right now, folks, you're probably looking at your Midwest Ball Player of the Year of the of the week, anyhow, with his credentials. Right now, passing's been very effective. Two touchdowns. He's going to get my vote. Mike Gillette will attempt the conversion. Splits the uprights, and Michigan's lead now goes up to 34 to 13. Now it has been a very impressive performance again by Jim Harbaugh. He hit on eight of nine passes for 150 far yards in the first half. He now has scored his second TD of the afternoon. Well, once again, as I didn't mention early here in the third quarter, Illinois looked like they had things going their way. They held Michigan on their first possession. And right now, we're going to take a look at the touchdown again. Here's the fake to Perriman. coming down the line of scrimmage. He's just going to duck in here right behind White. Very difficult play to stop. And he's over again. <laughs> Regardless of how many times we look at it, he scored again. Was it a very long drive following the block punt by Dieter Heron? Going a yard. But needing two plays to get in. Harbaugh scoring Gillette with a kick. And it's 34-13 Michigan. Gillette will kick off with the Wolverines. Ball teed at the 35-yard line. Ray Wilson and Keith Jones are the deep men for Illinois. 
We're in the very early stages of the second half, but Michigan has a commanding 34 to 13 lead. High end over end kick. Wilson will take it at the 13. Out to the 20, 25, and dropped at the 27 yard line. Eric Campbell was the first man down the field, and uh, he tackled Wilson after a 14 yard return. It'll be interesting to see now. You would guess that Illinois would have to go to the air and pull out every trick that it has, but it's been a difficult chore for Illinois to score this season. They're averaging only 16 plus points per game. They have scored 13 thus far. And they'll start this series with Brian Menkhausen. And he gives to Marklin, who gets about a yard. Well, we were thinking that Shane Lamp would be in because of now being down 21 points, that you want to start trying to put some points on the board at this point in the game right now. And yet Mr. White elects to continue to run the football. He's just flip-flopped them now. Menkhausen is out, and Lamb has gone in to operate the team at the quarterback slot. Receiver wide to the left as Lamb goes back to throw, has time down the field, and it's intercepted at the 50-yard line by Andy Muller. The pass was intended for Stephen Pierce, the first time that they've tried him this afternoon, and Andy Muller stepped up, and Muller made the interception. Right now, we're going to take a look at Muller. He's just going to go out of your screen, and he'll come back into your screen momentarily. He's all over this receiver. They try to get a, a, the back on the linebacker. It doesn't work. Muller's just a, a, a very, very good athlete. And right now, that ball had no business being thrown. So the Wolverines again create their own break and have the ball at the midfield stripe with the first down. McMurtry is a slot to the left. Jokic is split to the left. Morris at the 40, still on his feet, down to the 37-yard line. Jamie Morris. Tackled by Lynch, but picks up a first down for the University of Michigan. Morris had 32 yards rushing in the first half. Perriman led the Wolverines on the ground in the first half. Look at that hole. There's no Illinois ball players anywhere to be seen until he gets into the secondary, which is 13, 14 yards down the field. Higgins split to the right. McMurtry flanked to the left. Harbaugh changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Pitches it back now to Morris. Hemmed in, but still gets back to the 35-yard line for a gain of a yard and a half. James Finch came up and made the tackle. You know, right now, Michigan is a type of team that really doesn't pour it on to opponents. They usually try, and right now, they're in their running attack. But right now, Illinois realizes that and is playing eight men up on the line of scrimmage or close to the line of scrimmage. They got one-on-one -on -one coverage with both wideouts of Michigan. Uh, I would think they're going to go to a wideout very shortly here. Michigan has gone to the wishbone now with Jokic split to the right. McMurtry flanked to the left. On the reverse, McMurtry has all kinds of running room. He's at the 25 and shoved out of bounds at the 22-yard line by Bobby Dawson. And he saved a touchdown. McMurtry, with that blazing speed, had the sideline, and he took advantage all the way to the 22, where it's another Michigan first down. Let's take a look at this right now. Look at this is set up perfectly. Illinois is going one way. They've been using that pitch sweep so much today. And if it wasn't for that gentleman, that would have been another six points for Michigan. It's a first down at the 22-yard line for the Wolverines, who lead 34-13 with 9.02 left in the third quarter. McMurtry is a slot to the left. Morris is Whoa. drilled. Scott Davis hit him head on. And it was a mismatch of the nth degree. And Scott Davis is their best football player. He's been in and out of the lineup because of of injuries but right now you can see why he breaks a double team and comes and says hello to Mr. Morris. Davis at 6'7", 276. Morris at 5'7", 179. Give him a little knee, a little smack in the head as he goes down. <laughs> 8.29 left to be played in this third quarter. It's second down 
at 13 following the loss on the play. Higgins is split to the right for Michigan. Harbaugh to Perryman's got a big hole. Cuts back 15, 10, 5, touchdown Michigan. Bob Perryman scores again. And the route is on at Michigan Stadium. You know, it's really a shame if you're in Illinois because you did play a very, very tough first quarter. You came back, played a pretty good second quarter. Now the floodgates, they've opened up. This is going to be a long afternoon for Illinois. Mike Gillette will attempt to make it 41 to 13 with 8-12 left in this third quarter. The snap, the spot, and the kick. It's good. And the Wolverines, who trailed early in this game 3-0, have come back and taken a 41 to 13 lead. You know, as I mentioned, I, I really think what happened is that Illinois, they had a... Uh, we had a penalty on the last play of the game in the first half, which enabled Illinois to get field position in order to kick a field goal. I think it aggravated Bo. All the players were having a good time. They were up, and this set him off. So he goes in the locker room now, starts jumping them. They've come out, 14 quick points. That coupled with the fact that Michigan has better manpower than Illinois. Yes. Well, that always helps. <laughs> Makes a, quite a difference. Well, the folks at Michigan Stadium are having a very fun-filled afternoon as the Wolverines have built a 41-13 lead with 8 minutes and 12 seconds left in the third quarter. That's what Perriman has done this afternoon, averaging 6.1 yards per carry. Rick Sutkowitz has come into the game. He will kick off this time for the University of Michigan. Ray Wilson and Keith Jones are the deep men. Michigan has had all kinds of success here in this third quarter. The Illini have had the ball twice, unable to score. <laughs> Here's the kickoff. Dropped by Jones. Now reverses and is hit and spilled at the 15-yard line. Well, when things go bad, they go bad. A day that started to be a spring-like day is starting to degenerate into a cool, crisp fall afternoon. And I don't need this. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, Jones doesn't need this either right now. Does a good job of picking the football up and trying to get whatever he can get. The first really bad field position on a kickoff that Illinois has had today. Usher goes wide to the left as the temperatures plummet here at Michigan Stadium. The quarterback is Brian Menkhausen. And he gives to Jones, and he is spilled right at the line of scrimmage. May have picked up a half yard. I'll tell you, that Michigan defensive unit is really fired up. They are pounding each other on the back, on the hat, and they are ready to play the game. Jack Walker made the tackle on that play. Here's the Michigan scoring drive, traveling 50 yards in five plays, two minutes, two seconds, with Perriman going the final distance. Breaking a couple of tackles and making himself a very happy young man. A pair of tight ends now with the receiver Usher wide to the left as a flanker. Bent Cousin rolling to the left, throws, completes it to Marklin, and he goes about a yard as Ivan Hicks came up and spilled him at the 17-yard line. Excellent tackle by uh, Ivan Hicks. One-on-one -on -one in the flat area. We take a look. Minkhouse comes out. He rolls out, throws a quick pass to the back coming out of the backfield. Look at this tackle right now. If he doesn't make that tackle, the Illinois has a first down. But as it turns out, it is a third and eight. Usher comes wide to the right. Brown is split to the left. And Lamb is back to throw in trouble, and down he goes at the six-yard line. Mark Messner fired through and got Shane Lamb, and he was dropped back at the six-and-a-half-yard line. And again, that Michigan defensive unit, which gave up a lot of yardage early in this season, 
comes alive. And how about number 35 again, Dita Harry? He's going to put some pressure on the bottom end of the screen. Dita, we've been calling his name all day long. Certainly, if you're Illinois, you certainly do not want to be put in a position of 38, 39, because you are going to get heat. We mentioned the, the way the Michigan defensive unit has come alive. In the last three games, Michigan has allowed only 106 yards per game rushing and only 144 passing. In the first four games that Michigan has played this year, the rushing defense gave up 98 yards, but the Wolverines allowed 250 yards per game through the air. So it's been a reversal defensively. Michigan leads 41 to 13. We have 626 left in the third quarter. We'll be back in a moment. You're watching Pro Am. We're taking a look right now. Left back to pass right now. Dita Hearn, who's down on the ground right now. Let's take a look at it right now to see what exactly happens to him. I believe it really is just a cramp in his leg. They've been rubbing it out, his calf muscle. And I think it's his left leg or right leg there. Well, there's only two legs, a right and a left, is there not? Very good. What a college <laughs> education will do for a man is amazing. <laughs> Well, Chad Little, who normally has punted for, for, for Illinois, will do the kicking for the Illini now. That's it's a nice time Chad to Little. put in, huh? Well, Keith Jones had been doing the kicking, and uh, now he'll be taking a look at 10 guys coming right at him. Keith says, I've had enough playing today. Let, let, me, let somebody <laughs> else try this. Tony Gadd is back on the Illinois 45-yard line as Little, who averaged 40 yards per punt a year ago, Stands deep in his own end zone. And he gets it away. Gant chases it to the far side, goes out of bounds around the 39 yard line. A pretty good kick all in all right that time. Michigan was setting up for the return right now. Did a good job of, of holding up the Illinois people from coming downfield. The ball was kicked off the side of the foot, but still is at the 40 yard line. A 32 yard punt for Chad Little, and Michigan has excellent field position with 6.20 left in the third quarter and leading 41-13. to 13. All smiles down here in Ann Arbor. A lot of happy folks as this season continues. I'll tell you what, Hubbard was just that time talking to McMurtry. He was, he's going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage right now. It's going to be interesting to see if he goes downtown right now. Yoki is just split to the right. He's back to throw. Swing pass incomplete. Intended on the far side of the field for Webb. In case you joined us late and were not aware of the fact that John Colazar was injured earlier, Webb was playing as a backup. In that position is a wide receiver. McMurtry wide to the left. Now on the draw. A correction. Webb is running out of the tailback slot now. Didn't get much on the play. Jim Harbaugh has had another fine afternoon in the aerial game, completing 9 of 11 for 182 yards. Thomas Wilcher comes into the game now as Bo Schembechler starts to go a little deeper into the depth chart. And get some troops and playing time. He has McMurtry, black wide to the left. Jokish is split to the right. Wilcher is in a tailback. Harbaugh back to throw on third down. Throw to the side. It's caught by Jokic. Spins away at the 15. Down at the 12. Paul Jokic finally hauled down by Taylor and Glasson. Another first down for Michigan. Now this guy who switched from the courts of Chrysler Arena to the grass or artificial surface of Michigan Stadium has had quite a year. He does a nice job right now. Does a nice, he's, the defender thought he was going to the post, turned around, spun him around, and went to the flag. This play is designed to go to him. He's the primary receiver, does a good job, looks the ball in, eludes the one tackle, tries to get into the end zone for another touchdown. It's a first down. Harbaugh back to throw. He's being rushed. He keeps it. He's at the 10 and dives to the seven yard line. Unusual in that the Wolverines have had a pretty good ground game all afternoon. But Harbaugh was going to go upstairs, was finally forced to run. Brian Birchfield made the stop. 
But once again, he was looking for that freshman from Massachusetts. They had a bump and run on the bottom of your screen. He was going to loft that one up into the corner and let the receiver come down with the football, but it wasn't open. He decided not to take the chance. It's 41 to 13, Michigan leading with 436 left in the third quarter. And the Wolverines are again down knocking on the door. This is Wiltshire at the five. Touchdown, Michigan. Well, everybody's having a good day today. Here's a young man. He's also a track man. Great speed. Thomas Welcher, a senior from Detroit Central. Broke the tackle applied by Ed White and scampered in for six more Michigan points. And now Mike Gillette will attempt to put number 48 on the scoreboard. The snap, the spot, the kick is good. The Wolverines with four minutes 27 seconds left in the third quarter now lead 48 to 13. And we got a whole lot more football to play yet. And you'll see it all of course here on Pro-Am Sports. We hope you're enjoying your free weekend here on Pass. A lot of sporting events. College football. College hockey. Basketball. Pro hockey and basketball. And Great action like this. You think number 27 doesn't like to see a hole like this? Breaks a couple of tackles, and he knows where that goal line is. Young man out of Detroit. You got James coming around, getting a good block. Dames, excuse me, I said James Dames. Those offensive linemen have done an absolute fantastic job for Michigan today. And I'm hanging in there too with this cold. <laughs> Here's the uh, scoring summary for the latest Michigan drive. 39 yards, five plays, a minute 53 off the clock. Wiltshire going the final seven. Gillette kicking. Rick Setkowitz will boot it away for the University of Michigan. He's a junior from Troy. Ray Wilson and uh, Keith Jones are the deep men for Illinois. The Wolverines are starting to blast Illinois. It is no longer a contest. It is now a question of how big will the score become. Jones at the 25, out to the 30, to the 32, and stopped at the 33-yard line. Uh-oh, we got some. We got a late flag down here. The, the fellas are starting to get a, a, a little friendly down here today. See what the infraction is here in a moment. It'll be a personal foul against Michigan. So that will aid the Illinois efforts to move upfield. And they have pretty good field position right now. They're going to watch 15 more off. So it's going to be around the 46 yard line, I believe, 47. 48. It won't get any easier for Illinois next week. This team must face the Iowa Hawkeyes. So it will be another extreme test for Mike White's club. Michigan, meanwhile, will be playing at Purdue. Next week. You can see the Wolverines are starting to build some commanding totals in the other statistical categories. Gordon is flanked wide to the left. They have a slot to the left. On first down, got flags all over the place. We'll see what this one is. This is illegal procedure against Illinois. So that will move the ball back to the 43 yard line. It will be first down and 15. You know, at that time right there, they were going to run a draw play to, to the tailback. And what happens is right now, defenders are looking for trick plays, gimmicks. Uh, and what this guy has to do right here, Mr. White, is just go back and throw the football a little bit and try to, try to create something before this turns into 80 points. First and 15 on the draw. It goes to Jones. He's down to the Michigan 45-yard line. Alan Bishop made the tackle. See, they're looking for it. They just can't stop it. <laughs> Four minutes left to be played in the third period. Michigan with a 48-13 to 13 lead. This uh, fella, Keith Jones, trying to get a bit of a breather now. He has played a lot of football for 
Illinois. He has carried for 62 yards, but he has also been returning kickoffs, and there have been a whole bunch of those this afternoon. Ben Cousin looking for the bomb throws, and it's incomplete. It was intended on the far side of the field for Darrell Usher. Tony Gap was back defending against the pass. That'll bring up third down and three. Usher a Jr. from San Mateo, California. Actually recruited for track. He is an outstanding sprinter. He graduated a couple of years ago. And uh, working with the Illinois football team this fall. Clock is stopped with 3.34 left to be played in this third quarter. Michigan fans enjoying the afternoon. It started out to be a bit of a stunner, but then the Wolverines asserted themselves and from that time on have controlled the festivities. Ball is knocked down just after it was released by Brian Menkhausen. I believe maybe it was Mike Teeter that got a hand on it. Well, things are going poorly for the Illini here in their second half. They'll be forced to turn it over to the Wolverines again. No, he really was, if you, if you could believe this or not, folks. He was very lucky he did get knocked down because it was going to maybe get intercepted. He was throwing into a crowd somewhere where he should not have been looking. Keith Jones will kick, stands at his 40. He'll punt to Tony Gant, who stands on the Michigan 10. There's a snap, and it's a good one. And here's the boot, a high floater. This has the wind behind it. We'll kick into the Michigan end zone. And we'll be brought out to the 20-yard line. Three minutes, 22 seconds left in the third quarter. As we mentioned, what started out to be a sunshiny spring-type afternoon is starting to turn into the weather that we expect this time of the year, November 1. It's getting a little bit on the cool side, although these fellas may not notice it right now. Okay. The blood is flowing right now down in Ann Arbor, and rightfully so. They're number two in the nation, looking to become number one and maybe the national champ. Tom Wolcher is into the ball game. He is operating out of the tailback slot. McMurkery is in motion to the right. Harbaugh turns, gives to Perriman, and he just dives for three yards out to around the 23-yard line. With a victory here this afternoon, Bo Schembechter will run his record to 164 victories. Only 38 losses and four ties. That would put him one short of the legendary Fielding Yost in victories here at the University of Michigan. Jokish has come into the ball game. He is operating at the tight end slot with McMurtry set as the slot to the right. Harbaugh turns, gives to Wilcher, reverses his field and spins forward to about the 28-yard line. It'll be third down and two. With a victory here this afternoon, Schembechler will also hit another mile still. It would be his 100th victory here at Michigan Stadium. He has lost only 11 during his entire career here in Ann Arbor and has tied three games at Michigan Stadium. The general. The general can do it. Oh, he certainly can. It's third down and two yards to go. Wiltshire. Gets very close to the first down. He had to move to the 30 and upended and fell at the 30 yard line. But according to the mark, it looks like it might be a little bit short. We're going to bring the chain in from the far side. This is always sort of interesting. When the ball is kicked out of the end zone, they put the ball into play on the 20 yard line. Now, if you're at 30-yard line, that means you've gone 10 yards and should have a first down. If you haven't gone to the 20, uh, from the 20 to the 30, you're short of a first down. So why should you have to measure? Would you explain that to me? I, I'll tell you what. Sounds good to me. I'll tell you what. Uh, it's very silly. And uh, I really thought he did reach the 30-yard line, by the way. <laughs> well, there was the uh, difference in the spot. It looked from here as though he did. Monty Robbins will be doing the putting for Michigan. He's had another big day, a 57-yarder, an average of 50 and one-half. Darrell Usher is the deep man standing at the Illinois 31. They have 10 men up on the line of scrimmage going for the Michigan putter. 
Oh, and he fakes. Now he's going to look and run, and he has a first down. And he takes it out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Now, correct me, I think this was a play all the time. I wouldn't be a bit surprised, particularly the way it's developed. If you put 10 men up on the line of scrimmage and trailing 48 to 13, somebody's not real happy about that. You know, I was going to mention he is not, folks, 10 yards behind the center, which is really normal. This man had no visions of kicking that football. This was a set play, and I think he was going to throw the ball to Garland Rivers. Moore made the tackle, but way too late, as Robbins got the first down at the 47th, the 14th of the afternoon for the Wolverines. And there's action in the interior. The flag is down. We'll have to see which way this goes. It was obvious that one of the Illinois linemen had crossed the line of scrimmage, whether he got back in time or whether he was pulled off, we'll have to see. He was just plain offside. Yeah, I think it was number 57 guard. That is correct. Jason Guard, and he's a freshman. Big guy, too. He wanted to get in on the action a little bit, get his first hit. Uh, is this uh, throwing salt in the wood a little bit? Uh, faking, uh, faking the punt? <laughs> <laughs> I know, as we mentioned, there is bad blood between, you know, there's, bad, right. there's bad blood between the state of Michigan and the University of Illinois. Well, uh, everything has been pretty well recorded, uh, how these two coaches feel about each other. But to say that uh, Michigan is pouring it on, that would have to come from some other source. Not this one. <laughs> Wiltshire gets to the 45, still struggling to the 49, but there's a flag down back at the 41. Called not putting yourself. Well, I tell you spot. what, you know it's <laughs> the political season right now, and you're doing a good job. The only one man knows for <laughs> sure, and that's Bo Schimbecker. Jim Blondell made the stop, but it's illegal use of the hands against the University of Michigan. So we'll nullify the game. A minute and eleven left to be played in the third period. If I were a betting man, I'd say that Michigan's trying to score as many points as they can this afternoon. How's that? That's <laughs> well, you know something, in all fairness right now, that they are looking at a possible nas national championship, depending upon what Miami does, if, in fact, they try to play the Big 8 winner and go to the Orange Bowl or go to the Fiesta Bowl and play Penn State, possibly. So uh, this is a big game, and uh, to grab the, the polls, uh, the coaching Perriman not going anyplace, stopped shy of the 30-yard line by Jim Blondell. 47 oh, seconds left to be played in the third period. Ellie Uzelak working the sidelines. Well, that was easy for me to say. <laughs> Harbaugh over to the near sideline getting some instruction with 30 seconds left in the quarter. Michigan will have the wind at its back in the uh, fourth period, not that it needs it. Wolverines have moved the football almost at will. That's Greg McMurtry, the freshman from Brockton, Massachusetts, who turned down an opportunity to sign a pro baseball contract. Harbaugh's going long, caught by Higgins at the 45. Ken Higgins with another great catch. He had 22 receptions starting today's play. A senior from Battle Creek Lakeview. This was the receiver he was going to all the way. He's waiting for him to clear across the field to get in between the zones, and there it is. And that's what a, a heck of a toss. Just dropped it in between the defenders. Higgins pulled it down. What a beauty. That's a first down, and uh, the third period has expired. When play resumes, the Wolverines will have the ball on the Illinois 45-yard line with a first down. It's 48-13. Wolverines will be back in just a moment on Pro-Am. Osterman and Skip Mackholz at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Wolverines lead 48-13. They have a first down and a new quarterback at the 45-yard line. Chris Zerbrug with a handoff to Perryman. He gets seven yards on the first play. Zerbrug, the new quarterback, a 6'1 senior from Alliance, Ohio, replacing Jim Harbaugh, who had another very impressive day for the Wolverines.
It'll be second down, three yards to go. Zerbrug on the near sideline for a quick word. Returns to the Michigan huddle at the 45. He has McMurtry to the right. Higgins to the left as a split left end. Perriman is the fullback and the running backs. Wiltshire in white. Perriman gets the first down inside the 35 to the 34. Well, Michigan scores another first down for the afternoon. Jason Gard making the tackle. Right now you're going to see Michigan keep the ball on the ground. They want to occupy the clock as well as the ball. Keep it away from Illinois and try to get out of this quarter as fast as possible. McMurtry wide to the left on first down. Zerbra gives to Welcher. Cracked at the line of scrimmage, dropped at the 32-yard line. There is a flag on the play. The 48 points recorded by Michigan this afternoon is the highest total of the season thus far. Illegal use of the hands of the call against the Wolverines will cost them. The 38 points scored against Indiana last week in a 38-14 rop, the previous high watermark this year. 14-10 left to be played in the game. Michigan leads Illinois 48-13. Long discussion here. The play was on a first down. The question is whether they'll accept the penalty. You would think that there would be no question at all as they move it back 10 yards. It'll be first down and 20 for Illinois. Uh, for Michigan on the Illinois 44. Ken Higgins into the ball game, replacing Greg McMurtry at a wide receiver. This guy has completed his efforts for the afternoon. 11 of 13 for 235 yards and a touchdown. He had a 300-yard game a week ago through the air. Zerbrug back to throw. He's got White. He's got it to 15, 10, and out of bounds he goes at the three-yard line. Lance Harkey saved the day as White gathered it in and carried to the three a 41 yard pass play. This is a great call right now and a great pass. You're going to see he's going back throws it. White's got a linebacker Ellsworth I believe one on one down the sideline. Just a great toss. And then it was and the Wolverines are again down knocking on the door. White just missing going the distance. Brooke Ellsworth tackle, tiptoes down the sideline, and then shoved out of bounds. First and goal from the three-yard line. Zerbrug changing the play at the line, slides down the right side, pitches back to Wiltshire, and he's cut down for a loss. Ed White, who's had a brilliant afternoon defensively for the University of Illinois, cutting down Tom Wiltshire for a loss back at the six. This band has been uh, playing overtime this afternoon. You play after every touchdown and every score. As the Wolverines have played this afternoon, you're going to be out of breath. They're getting all fired up, and uh, they'll have the fight song all queued up here, ready to go, as the Wolverines are down, trying for six more. Here is Wiltshire. He gets inside the three down to about the two-yard line. And it'll be third down and goal from about the two and a half. At that time, Michigan was going from a two tight end type of offense with in a wishbone formation. And the wishbone formation is really just a full house with the fullback being up a little bit. And uh, just a typical halfback right over the right guard. And it's man on man blocking up front. And, and Michigan, as you have seen through this entire third quarter and now in the fourth quarter, has just controlled the line of scrimmage. Again, the ends are tight. And again, it's the wishbone as Erbrug. Turns, keeps the ball, and is in for the touchdown. Chris Zerbrug scores. And he's a happy young man. 54 to 13. Jay Lynch made the tackle, but far too late. And the Wolverines now lead 54 to 13 with 13.03 left. 
Mike Gillette will attempt the 55th point. And he boots it through. And Michigan now has a 55 to 13 lead. Do you think like years ago when Notre Dame used to play Navy and Army, they used to have running time in the second half? <laughs> you think they'll do that here? I don't know, but it's uh, last touchdown has been a clue and a cue to start your engines, gentlemen. The race is on for the highway. And here's Zorbrook coming down the line of scrimmage. He watched Harbaugh do it in the first half, and right now he's going to follow suit. Once again, very difficult, very difficult play to stop right now. The defenders got to they got to check Perryman to see if he has the ball. They got White is coming around for the toss. Very difficult play. Now the Wolverines get the road next week. They'll be playing at Purdue. Certainly a will go in as prohibitive favorites against the Boilermakers who yes. you saw here on Pro-Am Sports last week having uh, absolutely no luck against the Michigan State Spartans. But right now there's that group of the offensive linemen who just done a remarkable job today in blocking Illinois. They're very happy. Stephen Williams and Daryl Usher are the deep men as Setkowitz kicks off. Williams takes it at the two. He's up to the 15 and dives to the 25. Lost the ball, still bouncing around. And it may be Michigan's ball. We'll see. Nope, it's going to belong to University of Illinois. Mandel was over there, made the hit. And it looked for a moment as though the Wolverines might have still another big break and a chance to score even further. Michigan player down, I believe, is the kicker. Rick Sutkowitz, it is. What is he doing down the field? <laughs> Let's take a look at this return right now. They're trying to set up a wall to the right. Should have the ball in the other hand. He's carrying it loosely, and it does come loose. Everybody's trying to get, oh, there's the kicker. The Illinois play was trying to scramble for the football. He tried to jump over somebody. But he got hurt. Here's the scoring summary on the latest touchdown for Michigan. Traveling 80 yards in 12 plays, 5 minutes and 19 seconds. Zerbra going in for 2. Gillette the kick, and it's 55 to 13. Now we've got a lot of sports activity coming up on Pro-Am. The Tigers will return next spring on Pro-Am Sports. Matt Cousin back to throw over the middle and it's incomplete. That went through about three sets of hands and then popped out of the intended receiver Stephen Williams. As we take a look at it, number five Campbell, he was looking end zone with that pass. Let's take a look at it. It goes through one hand and look at him right there. The ball gets tipped. That's why he doesn't catch it. Eric Campbell had designs on going to the end zone, but all of a sudden the ball was no longer there. Second down and 10. Gordon comes wide to the left, as does Stephen Williams. Metkowsen rolling to the left. He throws back to the right on the screen, completes it to Reese, who comes up to the 25-yard line, and he's dropped at the 27 by J.J. Grant. 12-34 left to be played in the ball game. Michigan 55, Illinois 13. And although it's hard to believe at this stage, it's a fact, the Wolverines had to come from behind twice this afternoon. Well, Illinois went down on the opening drive and kicked the field goal, and they were, was ahead a couple other times in this football game. What it did was uh, wake up a sleeping giant. It's third down and five yards to go. Bentkausen looks, throws over the middle, and it is caught nicely by Jerry Reese at the 31-yard line, but appears to be short of a first down. Grant again made the tackle. They'll have to bring the chain in from the far side. Now they've spotted it, and it is a first down. The initial spot indicated it would be short. But then when they place the ball on the field, it is a first down. 
It's a simple, simple pass to the tight end Reese coming out of the backfield in a circle. And uh, very, very difficult to stop. Race the uh, third highest total of pass reception on the Illinois team coming into this afternoon's game. And Cousin hit from behind and dropped by Grant, who's having a great second half. Ball pops free, and Michigan takes over. What a blast by Grant. And the Wolverines will have the ball on the 24-yard line. And folks, if you can feel it, Minkhausen can feel it right now. He doesn't even feel him coming. Grant's coming on a blitz. Right now, he's looking long. He's really lucky he didn't stick that helmet a little further into that back. It really could have hurt that young man. It's a nice play by the Michigan ball player. Michigan takes over the football. They have Callaway in as a wide receiver to the right. Pitch coming back to Wilcher. He's at the 25, hurdles to the 23 yard line. Bo Schembechler has used a lot of backs for this afternoon. John Colazar went down early as a result of a collarbone injury and did not return. And we hope that's not serious because that will be a great loss to this football team. 10.57 left in the game. Michigan 55, Illinois 13. Callaway flanked to the right. Higgins set as a wing to the left as Wilcher tries the middle now, cuts outside. He's got a block. He's at the 15. And out of bounds he goes after picking up the first down at the 12 yard line. African Grant drove him out of bounds on the far side. It's the first time we called his number today. Let's take a look at Wiltshire right now. His, this is why he's a good back, folks. He sees nothing there. Going to use that great speed he has and just outruns everybody right now. If Grant is not there for Illinois, this is a touchdown. Wiltshire, a senior from Detroit Central. And now Higgins comes out of the ball game. And Paul Yokish, a senior from Claxton, checks in at the split end spot. Michigan building big numbers in the rushing game again today. Callaway, a flanker to the left. Wiltshire again. He's got running room. Five, three, and down at the two-yard line. Ed White made the tackle, and now the Wolverines are looking at surpassing the 60-point mark. We may have a few folks scrambling now to see when uh, the last time the Wolverines recorded a total of points as high. And right now, you can see the hole right now opening up. It's just once again that this offensive line is just absolutely dominating the line of scrimmage here in the second half, doing a remarkable job. This is when football is fun for that offensive line. Wiltshire having a big second half. Zerbrug turns, carries the ball. Easy touchdown for the Wolverines. I wish they would have given the ball to Wiltshire down here. He deserved a, a touchdown down here. Did a great job of bringing him, carrying him down the field, really. In 1981, here at Michigan Stadium, the Wolverines beat Illinois 70 to 21. It is now 61 to 13. Wolverines with 10-10 left in the game. Plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, plenty of time is right. <laughs> Gillette will attempt the point after and kicks it through and it is now 62 to 13. <laughs> so the uh, Wolverines with 10-10 left in the ball game have a commanding lead and we'll be back with a kickoff in a moment on Pro-Am Sports. White has not enjoyed this afternoon. He is the head coach for the University of Illinois. He is trying to snap a two-game losing streak. He will not this afternoon as Michigan prevails 62 to 13. Moons will kick off for Michigan. This is his first kickoff for Pat. Williams and Usher are the deep men taken by Usher. Comes out to the 10, 15, 20. 
and shoved all the way back to the 15, spun around and still on his feet and finally decked at the 15-yard line. It was Grant again who made the initial contact. You know, I've never been, uh, there's only one other time I've been involved and I was playing that I, I did see 60-something points put on the board. And that's when we went out to Seattle in my sophomore year and a, a young man, a quarterback, Sonny Sixkiller out there that absolutely tore us apart. As we take a look at this right now, Usher, he's going to come out with the ball. Gives a valiant effort. Look at this. He keeps his legs going. One Michigan, two Michigan, three Michigan, four Michigan ball players. Finally, the whistle's blown, and uh, he says, Mr. Usher, take it easy here for a minute. Here's the latest Michigan scoring drive. Four plays, 24 yards following the recovery of the fumble. And Zerbra going in for his second TD. Ten minutes even left to be played in this game. Time out of the field with Michigan leading at 62 to 13. I'll tell you what, they better get these ten minutes. <laughs> we might have darkness upon us. Yeah, I don't think uh, the athletic director has any uh, portable lights around this afternoon. It's it's very dark now. The pictures that you are seeing are as a result of some fine equipment and excellent technicians because it's a lot darker than it would be uh, guessed in the picture that you're seeing. Jeff Martin is spun around on the far side by Holland. It'll be second down and 10 yards to go. Well, right now, if you're Illinois, uh, it's been a devastating day for you, but right now you have some younger people in here right now. What you're trying to do now, if, if you really can believe this, is try to come down, try to score for next week try to get some momentum get it going into practice of next week it's going to be a down 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 day after this after this night after this ball game but you have to try to find some positive notes that cows in again back to throw he's throwing long maybe intercepted nope it's overthrown Alan Bishop the Michigan back was the closest man to the ball it fell incomplete So we have the clock stopped with nine minutes, nine seconds left in the game. Everybody came prepared today, but so far it has gotten cold. It has not rained as was anticipated. It has gotten cool as had been expected. Mitchell into the ball game. For the University of Michigan as Illinois comes to the line of scrimmage with a third down and ten. Ed Cousin back to throw to the sideline. It's incomplete. A fine effort by Hassel of the University of Michigan. He reached out and tapped the ball away. And again, the Michigan uh, defensive unit does its job and is saluted by the crowd here at Michigan Stadium. A ball that shouldn't be thrown right now. It's a double coverage. Almost picked off. So it's time to punt. And Chad Little will do the honor, standing at his five. Tony Gatt is back at the 40-yard line, and Michigan has eight men up on the line of scrimmage. High snap. Here's the kick. Goes almost straight up. It's an end-over-end -end kick going to the far side. Takes a good Illinois bounce. Comes downfield to the 42-yard line and rolled dead to around the 41. But Michigan will have great field position again with 8.51 left to be played. The score is Michigan, 62, Illinois 13. We'll be back in just Michigan scoring the most points since the blasted Illinois in 81. The pitch back. Welcher spins forward to the 45. Michael Taylor is the new quarterback for the University of Michigan. He wears number nine. He's a sophomore from Lincoln Heights, Ohio. Jim Blondell making the tackle. There's the statistic that we have for you. Taylor with a quick word from the head coach, Bo Schembechler. It's second down and five yards to go. Michigan leading at 62 to 13. McMurtry is wide to the left. Again, it's Wiltshire. He's got a big hole. He is across the 50 and may have the first down. Steve Glasson made the tackle. 
on Tom Wilcher, who is enjoying a very fine second half of play. Yeah, he's had some problems in his career here at Michigan with injuries. But right now, he's finishing up on a high note in his senior year, and uh, it's kind of nice to see that. It's a first down for Michigan at the Illinois 48 yard line. This time, it's Webb carrying into the middle across the 45 to the 44 yard line. If they play their cards right, there's about seven and a half minutes left to go in this game. They could occupy most of the clock and then go for two. <laughs> oh, yeah, you bet they'll go for two. <laughs> That would take any suspense away, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's what Wilcher has done. 12 carries, 49 yards. Taylor, the quarterback, has a team in the wishbone. Keeps the ball, late pitch, and nothing there for Callaway. Callaway dropped back at the 48-yard line. Lance Harkey making the tackle. Now they'll mark it at the 47. It'll be third down, nine yards to go. Taylor returns to the playing field after getting the play from Coach Schembechler. We might see his first pass. Callaway going wide to the left as a wide receiver. Ford is split to the right. He's up on the line of scrimmage. And Taylor is back to throw. He's hit, gets away. Still on his feet at the 45 and hauled down from behind at the 44-yard line. Mr. Taylor right here, as you see him getting up, picking himself off the ground, he's going to be dropping back right now. Illinois is going to come with a blitz. He shows some quick feet right here. Looks like he's down with the acceleration right now. Turns nothing into something. The Michigan ghouls are asking that the Wolverines go for it. <laughs> <laughs> They want to turn this one into something really bad. But Bo Schembechler has Robbins on to do the putting. And Usher is back at his 10-yard line. Good snap. Here comes a pretty good rush from the right side, but a nice punt. Bounces a parallel to the 10-yard line. is going to turn into a dandy as it goes out of bounds on the far side at about the 7- or 8-yard line. Grant was downfield guarding the football as it scurried along parallel with the 10. Very fine putt by Robbins, 37 yards with no return. Five minutes, 47 seconds left to be played. It's 62 to 13. The executive producer of Pro-Am Sports is William Glenn. The senior producer of College Football 86, Michael Smith. Our producer and director on this afternoon's telecast was Jerry Hausfeld. Today's coordinating producer is Jim Holly, and our associate producer, Frank Alvin. Our production coordinator is Kristen Studebaker, and the production manager of PASS is Christine Acavelli. Our thanks to everybody working on the crew. Another fine job this afternoon. We hope you've enjoyed it, wherever you may be. 5.34 left to be played in the game. Michigan leading, 62-13, and the stadium... Starting to empty out a little bit now as a lot of the faithful head for the party or head for home. Second down and four yards to go. Stephen Williams flank to the left. Ray Wilson set as a tailback as Menkhausen goes back to throw. Swings it out to Wilson on the near sideline and he is dropped at the 18-yard line. Tackle made by Bissell. There's a flag down on the play. Uh, I think it's against Illinois. Uh, there's a little bit of contact. Nerves are becoming to unwind a little bit down here on the football field. Very frustrating if you're Illinois. See what the infraction uh, is. Still being discussed. Personal foul against Michigan. Now Bo Schembecker is not happy about that. They have just corrected that. It is a personal foul against Illinois. I 
to thank Barry Smades for handling the statistics for us this afternoon. Bob Burns, who has handled the spotting. It's been a busy afternoon for both of these men. Makes it very easy for us to work. Helps a whole lot. Now the man needs one more in the victory column to tie Fielding Yost for most victories as the head football coach here at the University of Michigan. Well, these fans are getting more airtime than you and I are here. <laughs> Rightfully so. 450 left to be played in the game. They are good fans down here in Hanover. Oh, you're telling me. Pass downfield is too high and uh, sails out of bounds. Schulte was back defending against the pass. Tim is a twin brother of Todd Schulte, both seniors from Villa Hills, Kentucky. A lot of the folks have uh, headed for the exits here at Michigan Stadium. Four minutes, 40 seconds. This game uh, actually was no longer in doubt at halftime. Although I shut out in the second half. Third down and nine. Metkowsen back to his goal line, throwing long, and it is incomplete. It was caught by Stephen Price, but when he was hit from behind by Moten, it squirted away and fell incomplete, so it'll bring up fourth down. Number 38, Moten does a nice job this time right now. You're going to see the Illinois receiver catch this football. Pierce, and he separates the ball, and Pierce, good job. He's the leading receiver in the Big Ten coming into today's game. He has not caught a pass this afternoon. Some of these younger ball players, you got to remember, for on the Wolverine football team, do not get an opportunity to play all the time. So once they have their chance, they're going to make the most of it. Holloway is the deep man waiting for Little's punt. Now we know why he hasn't been punting all day. He hasn't done real well, has he? But he's getting a good bounce. Comes out to the 43-yard line. It is so dark here that when that ball left his foot and went up, it never did clear the rim of the stadium, and it got lost among the customers up there. You couldn't see the ball. This looks a lot better than it really is. It is really dark here. The only thing that is good about the weather is that it has not rained this afternoon. Four minutes and 22 seconds left to be played. Michigan 62, Illinois 13. Eleven different Michigan players have carried the ball this afternoon. So no one can complain that they haven't had an opportunity. Taylor continues at quarterback. He is the third man to work under the center for the University of Michigan today. The pitch coming back outside at the 40, and down he goes at the 38-yard line, and a flag is thrown there. It was Holloway, but a flag was thrown. Well, it was on Illinois right now. It was hitting a personal foul. Very silly, uh, senseless thing to do, really. Number 46, I believe it was, Burkle. That uh, to try, you know, the, the game is out of reach, and, and I don't know if he's trying to purposely to hurt somebody, but the man is out of bounds. There's no reason to hit him. Well, maybe it wasn't as well, bad as all that. No, it wasn't quite that bad. I thought initially that... Uh it was, you know, for some reason, when you look at the replay, Larry, and you see the live shot, that it looks like it's extremely late. Right there, it didn't look like it was that late. Of course, we have a completely different angle and are much further away. It's a first down for the Wolverines, who have it at the 23-yard line. Taylor gives to Holloway. He's got some room across the 15, all the way down to the 11-yard line. Ernie Holloway, a junior from Detroit, played at Deporas, brought down by Jason Gard. And we have an Illinois player that is slow in getting up. And look at the offensive lineman coming off the ball once again, doing a remarkable job. The fullback, he's getting through cleanly. Wiltshire, he's trying to get a block. He is getting a block. And there is another good run by a Michigan back. Ball at the 11-yard line, where it's first down for Michigan. The Wolverines leading 62 to 13 with four minutes, four seconds left. Oh, 
Taylor again to Holloway. Him then cuts back, drives to the six yard line. Wachter made the tackle for the University of Illinois. Well, you can take a look at the yards rushing right now. It's definitely one sided. Most of those yards for Illinois, though, coming in the first half, 96 of those, that's about the average of what they do have for a football game on the ground. Now, the Wolverines a little ahead of their average. It has been 196 yards for the season. They're at 222 and still working on it. Taylor keeps the ball, cuts back sharply, still on his feet at the one yard oh. line. Well, the young fellow made a big, big effort to carry it all the way, but was finally hauled down short of the goal line. Michael Taylor, a sophomore from Lincoln Heights, Ohio. Well, Mr. Taylor is saying to himself, I'm the only quarterback without a touchdown today. Let me get one also. And look, he makes a great effort to try to get to that stripe. It's a first down, so the Wolverines will have four cracks at the goal line from inside the one. 257 left in the game. Number 27, I hope, gets the football. That would be Wilcher. He's to the right of the formation, everybody moving, and flags all over the place. I think the Michigan left guard moved prematurely. Well, you got some young linemen down there, Larry, right now, and they're looking to, they're pumped up to get this. Well, sure. They to get the unit in, the third unit. A lot of the third, second, three ball players are in right now. And they're a little anxious. And they're looking at their scoreboard. They know they'd like to put another one up there. Exactly. They really don't realize the 62 points on them. No, they do realize the 62 points on the board. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in the game at this point. <laughs> That's a fact. 239, the Wolverines with 503 yards in total offense this afternoon. 233 left in the game. Taylor keeps it, cuts back, touchdown Michigan! Michael Taylor, sophomore from Lincoln Heights, Ohio, scores to make it 68 to 13. Five touchdowns have been scored by Michigan quarterbacks this afternoon. Harbaugh two, Zerbrug two, two, and now Taylor, Taylor one. Well, normally all their lockers would be one, two, three in, in, the, in the locker room next to each other, so uh, there's going to be a lot of bragging going on in that area today. Gillette kicks it through, and it is now 69 to 13, with two minutes, 26 seconds left of a play. The Wolverines. Shutting out Illinois here in the second half and have really poured him a bunch of points. 69 to 13. You know, once again, Larry, didn't mention it in the third quarter. Um, I really believe that field goal at the end of the half caused Illinois some problems. Let's take a look at the touchdown right now. Taylor runs the option to his left, comes in, sees the goal line, he's happy. Let's take a look at him. Fakes it to the fullback, comes down the line of scrimmage. Line doing an excellent job once again blocking. And Illinois uh, has given up the 69th point. I'm not so sure that it was a matter of uh, anger or frustration or emotion as much as it was a, just a tremendous difference in manpower on these two teams. I don't know. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, you, you know, Michigan has, has gotten better week after week right now. They've gotten some people that were not healthy back. And right now, they are definitely running on all cylinders. Darrell Usher returning the kickoff to about the 33-yard line. That's the most positive note that this Illinois football team has shown today is their kickoff. They've had a lot of chance to work on it. That's the latest scoring drive with Taylor going in. Set you up nice, did it? But yeah, you're a great straight man. But Illinois, I, I thought the, the strategy was excellent at the start of the game. I think the uh, Illini right completely time. fooled the, the University of Michigan as far as what the uh, philosophy was going to be for this game. And they moved the ball extremely well. Then it was a matter of Michigan adjusting. The Wolverines adjusted. They had better talent. And they have uh, kicked them around a little bit this afternoon and route to a lopsided victory. They certainly have. 
Right now, it's like a four-yard completion. And they're in their two-minute offense right now. And one setback. Ball was dropped by Metcalfson. There are flags down. Well, the Wolverines will play at Purdue next week. Should go in as heavy favorites. And Illinois will continue to have its hands full playing the Iowa Hawkeyes. Well, let's take probably a look. They will be a little upset after today's effort. It was a good snap that time. Quarterback just pulled out. Metcalfson put that a little too quickly. Plus, first of all, there was procedure all over the place right now. Very frustrating. Illinois. Moves the ball back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. Stephen Williams coming wide to the left. A pair of receivers wide to the right. And the pass is thrown behind Daryl Usher, the intended receiver. Well, what do you do if you're Bo Schembechler? You said you wanted to play coach okay. this afternoon. You score a resounding victory over Illinois here today. You go on the road tomorrow, uh, next week. Obviously, a big favorite at Purdue, a team that could conceivably upset you, but you really don't expect that to happen. How do you get your guys ready? Well, that's a very good question. It's a very honest question, because uh, as we take a look at the scoring real quickly here by the quarters, it's a very difficult task. The only thing you can talk about is he, he, these young people here, uh, they're very intelligent, and they know they have a shot, a legitimate shot, at the national championship. Their record is in their favor going into here now. The only problem they would have is out on the West Coast. It looks like probably they'd be going to the Rose Bowl. But right now, the players know what they have to do, and, and they're going to prepare themselves week after week. And Bo certainly is not going to let them uh, have a bad week of practice because he honestly believes week after week that these teams can beat him. Holloway will field the punt. He stands at the 30-yard line. See, Jones is back punting now. Yeah. And just got it away. This is a good punt. The flag is down and they get a roughing the kicker penalty. I finally figured this out. Once the ball is inside the 15, Jones doesn't punt. <laughs> when it's outside the 15, he punts. It's going to be a roughing the kicker penalty against Billy Harris. Well, let's take a look at Jones right now. Finally gets a good punt off right there. Thought they had another block. And we have Harris, the middle guard, coming in, trying to look for the block, get his name. It's not a nice way to get your name on TV, but nevertheless, his number has been called. Looking ahead to Wednesday here on Pro-Am Sports, we'll start our action off at 7 o'clock with Jackson action at Northville. That's at 7 on pass, and then at 7.30, we'll take you live to the Pontiac Silverdome where the Detroit Pistons play host to the Washington Bullets in NBA basketball. You'll see it all here on Pro-Am Sports. Pass complete. Darren Brown takes it to about the 40, uh, maybe inside the 40-yard line, about the 39 and a half. And this, Stops the clock. This really was the plays that we were expecting all, all day long, Larry, was the, the pass to the back coming out of the backfield or the tight end on, on some short routes, and uh, they tricked us, and right now they're going to it just a little bit too late, though. Zerbrug is back to throw and throws low. He's intended at the 32-yard line for Anthony Williams. Clock again stopped with a minute 21 left to be played. Weekend preview will continue throughout this weekend here on Pro-Am Sports. In order to order a pass on a full-time basis, you can call your local cable operator or you may call the pass office at 313-583-7600 for additional information. Metcalfson rolling out to the right. Cuts back downfield at the 30-yard line. He's hauled down. Very close, but short of a first down, I believe. J.J. Grant made the tackle to the hurry-up offense with a minute five left to be played in the game. Third and less than a yard to go for the first down. Metcalfson throws to the sideline incomplete, intended for Stephen Williams. I'm 
going to take a wild guess and say they're going to go for it on fourth and one. <laughs> now, down uh, nine million points here. Uh, very frustrating day once again for Illinois. And as we look at Mike White talking to some of his football players, just a time right now that you really do want to get on the board to build momentum for next week, though. He's back to throw, and he completes the pass for the first down. We want to make a correction here. That number 56, they got uh, credit for the uh, roughing the kicker, was not Harris. It was Boyden, who also wears number 56. You see, if you look through this program, you'll find some duplicate numbers. When you've got a lot of players, as Michigan does, you don't have enough numbers for them. So you have duplicate numbers, and it is all designed to foul up announcers. It's a set plan. <laughs> well, we'll give him credit for it then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boyden is number 56, as is Billy Harris. And they turned the work lights on here. It's so dark. These lights are used to help people see when they clean up. It's second down, five yards to go. Bent cows and throw to the sideline. That will stop the clock with 34 seconds left. Stephen Williams, the man for whom the pass was intended. Well, he was looking as a freshman uh, type of a play, really, that young quarterback was looking at the receiver the whole way down the field, and you can't do that. You've got to try to look off the defense a little bit, and that play just didn't have a chance to work. 34 seconds left in the game. J.J. Grant has had himself quite a game for the Wolverines this afternoon. Matt Cousins pass incomplete intended for Jerry Reese. That stops the clock with 30 seconds left. Bonnie Robbins, the putter for the University of Michigan. A lot of guys have had good days for the Wolverines this afternoon. A lot of people have had an opportunity to play that have not seen a lot of action in the previous games. And that's a thrill for some of the younger ball players too, to play in front of a house like this. Matt Cousin straight back the throw. Over the middle it goes and a great catch made by Jerry Reese. Nope, he drops yes. the ball. No, they're going to call it. No, they're going to okay. call it. No, we've got one official overruling the other one. Now we have a third official coming in. Wonder what he's going to say. Looks like it's going to be an incompleted forward pass as the ball is brought back out to the 17 yard line. Mankhouse is coming back right now. Looking for the tight end, Reese. Looks like he's going to catch the football. Merritt popped away, but after he hit the turf. Yeah, it looks like it is a catch. It's, it looks like the ground initiates the fumble. It causes the fumble. Now, regardless, it is going to be Michigan's football at the 17-yard line. How about another quarterback right now? Mr. Brown. Welcher, the ball carrier. Demetrius Brown, sophomore from Miami. Maybe the final play of this ball game. There's seven seconds left. Now, Bo Schembechler is a happy man. He has counterpart on the other side. He's coming toward the center of the field to uh, Jake Bo's hand, but he is not real happy about what he has seen here this afternoon. As the Illini were absolutely shelled. 69 to 13. They meet at the center of the field. A quick word from Bo for Mike and a quick word from Mike for Bo. And they head to their respective dressing rooms. Michigan a commanding 69 to 13 victory over the University of Illinois here this afternoon. So the Wolverines record now goes to 8 and 0. And the University of Illinois dips to 2 and 6. It's a third straight loss for the Illini. 